Where are we on? Are we on Twitch? You're on mute. Hello everyone, welcome to part four of our cyberpunk campaign. We're so very excited. I'm Jason from Realmsmith and we are producing hosting tonight under the ethereal Gary Khan banner. Uh, we're so glad to be a part of it again. Uh, this is how many years in a row now, Luke, that we've done this. Um, very, very happy and very, very excited to, uh, to be a part of it. Uh, I'm going to push it to Luke now and, uh, and then we'll start the game. Hey, thanks very much, Jason. I think this is maybe year three that we've done this. I mean, it's been going back a little ways. So uh, here we are, GaryCon 13, virtual once again. Uh, looking forward to uh, playing some cyberpunk with all my friends here. Uh, but there's a couple of things I just wanted to cover first. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, Steamforged Games. I got to play Epic Encounters earlier today with a whole bunch of the crew from Steamforged. That was a, that was a ton of fun. We got to kill the Hydra. I thought we were gonna be goners, but we made it. And of course, my friends at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, as well as all of our uh, vendors, uh, our vendor sponsors, 
thank you very much. We couldn't be here tonight doing this without you guys. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we're doing uh, while we're here in streaming is supporting Extra Life. Every year we support charities at GaryCon, and for the last several years we've supported Extra Life. Uh, so please, if you uh, if you can, uh, go to extralife.org and donate. We are Team GaryCon 13. You can join the team. You can tell your friends. Just donate a buck, five bucks, thousand bucks, whatever you can, whatever you can, you can will be appreciated. Um, tomorrow uh, we have a great lineup as well. Right here on the Gaxmore channel, we got. Uh, I'm going to be playing in the Gooey Cube great giveaway. Then we have Savage Eberron with uh, Christian Serrano as well as uh, Imogen and a couple other folks. Uh, I believe Keith uh, Baker might even be playing in that game. And our finale is High Plains Drifters. Uh, with uh, DM Andrew Cosby, a great screenwriter. We have David Harbour from Stranger Things. Uh, this Matt Lillard guy is going to be joining us as well uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Deb Wool, Debran Wool, uh, Alicia, Alicia Marie, and myself will all be playing in that one. We're trying to raise five thousand dollars for Extra Life in that game. So tell your friends, uh, share it. Uh, let's raise some money and do some great stuff. But tonight, it's all about Team Monster and some cyberpunk. So today we're going to blast some stuff and have a good time and I'm sure uh, make millions and millions of credits. Uh, so without any without any further ado, I will pass the baton to Maximum Mike himself and let's get this adventure started. So kids, once again we're gathered as Team Monster. Tonight's uh, going to be interesting because it's going to be happening a couple weeks after the previous strangeness actually more like about a month and a half we're going to be getting all the band together again because tonight we're going to be seeing Knox at her new gig and for those of you who are tuning in who haven't been following the adventures of this uh, misaligned crew of misanthropes um, let's introduce everybody around uh, starting with the lovely Miss Knox herself also known as Nora Tell them a little everyone. bit about yourself. Oh, hi everyone. I'm Nora Ibrahim, AKA Nora Logical. And in this uh, this cyber cyberpunk game, I play Nox Aria, a rocker boy. All right. Anything else I need to? I think that's a good start. Let's go take a look at, oh, I think Matt's up there in a the corner. Say hi. Hi, my name's Matthew Lillard. I'm playing serial killer from the 19... Something, something, classic film hackers, hack the planet. Where are we a PG? Are we PG or what is our streaming? PG 13. We're I'd PG say. 13. Yeah. PG 13. Best son of a bitch film you've ever done seen. <laughs> uh, right off, right off the bat. Let me tell you, well, we are right off the map. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ow. Um, uh, I just want to say real quick, I love playing in this game. I, every time we get together, it's a treat to spend time with you at the, at the virtual. I don't like playing virtually. I'm done with this. Um, but soon enough, our country and the world will come out of this horrible downward spiral and we'll get around the table again. But for now, we celebrate Gary Khan. We celebrate the life of this great man and this great family. And I'm just proud to be with you and to share the table with all of you because I like all of you except for Beast. Beast, I like. <laughs> I like everyone else. Okay. Well, you know, actually, gang, so it sounds like when this is all over, we all show up at Matt's house and uh, we'll uh -huh. bring kids. Yeah. Don't ask me to do intros. You have to ask Matt to just right off the bat. I just well, since we bring brought the, up bring Beast, the hype. <laughs> since he brought up Beast, let's talk Beast. Beast, tell us about yourself. Hey everybody, I'm Beast. I'm playing Paladin, a street savvy combat vet of the Corp Wars. And to quote the immortal cult classic Thunderdome, Paladin keeps Mr. Dead in his pocket. Yep. And moving up the table, we've got Luke. Luke, tell the people about yourself. I'm playing Lucky Galanti. Uh, I'm the pilot of this group, uh, getting him in and out, shaking and baking. That uh, sounds good. And in, in real life, I'm Luke Gygax, the founder of Gary Khan, author, soldier. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank all of you for watching and being here. Cult classic. All right. And let's see. In the upper square, we've got John. John, tell us about your character and yourself. Oh, wow. 
Um, I am John Kovaleski. I run a little company called Monster Fight Club. We make cool cyberpunk stuff. Buy it. Tonight, I am too tall, Captain Da Vinci, nomad shipping captain, all around cool guy, and apparently the coolest uncle in the planet. All right. Okay. And last but not least, uh, I think we've got everybody, have we? No? Me! Jason! <laughs> Uh, I was looking for you in the middle screen. Good. I couldn't find you. It's all good. It's all good. I know the zoom is all different from that. I am yeah, Jason as a beta from Realm Smith as usual. Um, and I am playing Isolate, the Russian solo, who started as red shirt, but I think has proved himself since. We'll find out. Okay. And as Jason has asked us all to do, please put your character names in the little slots indicated so that I know who to call you. Yeah. That way we'll stay in character, such as it is. Is this method acting? Oh, oh we've got a method. It's madness. I don't know. Is Beast going to actually kill people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else is new? All right, the problem with Beast is stopping from killing somebody. You know, we, he and I go out drinking. You know, it's like, you know. This just in. Water. Wet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, gang. So we all set to get in trouble here. Yeah, pick up the brightness Ready. a little bit so I can see you. Uh, just as a fair warning, Mike is running a little bit under the weather today, so he may not be up to full speed, but believe me, I've been planning what I'm going to do with you guys most of this week. I've already explained to my lovely and equally evil wife what the plan is, so it's a couple of my good friends who've gamed with me for years, and they're going, oh, they're going to have so much fun, or hate you forever. I'll see which one I get. So we're starting off. We're starting tonight in the Paradox. The Paradox is a club. It is in what used to be the uh, old city of Night City. So if you remember your history, and I'm sure you don't, uh, when Night City was nuked, uh, most of the nuke went to the north west so um, most of the explosion did not hit the downtown good news the bad news was it was still pretty bad between the heat the firestorms and all the other stuff and when they reconstructed night city which is currently going on by the way to eventually become what many of you may know as night city cyberpunk 2077 they shoved an awful lot of the old city into the bay as Phil. You know, you got radioactive stuff. You got to do something with it. Put it underneath some dirt and hopefully nobody digs it up. Right? Right. So they tore down what was the old center city. Um, then they basically covered it with several dozen feet of dirt, cleaned it up, and sooner or later, they decided it was safe to redevelop it. So you were in a new club, Club Paradox. Uh, it is a really nice club uh one of the interesting things about it is that it has holographic inner walls which means effectively the club can change what the venue looks like quite a bit based on who's playing so you know they go around the artists and they say you know you're gonna be doing a gig tonight what kind of you know feel do you want to have in a club tonight and so they came to Knox, Aria, and they said, Knox, um, they've secured you for a week-long gig. And uh, this is a pretty good step up for you. You know, this is, this is good. Uh, the club is hot. You're hotter and getting hotter. And uh, what do you want to shape the club to look like tonight? And don't say purple and pink and blue, because that's the entire city around you. Cool. Well, let me let me just reconfigure what I'm about to say then. Um, so <laughs> I want it to look like a disco ball. Okay. I just want everybody to. I I want everybody to need to wear their sunglasses inside. I want it shiny. 
Uh, I want it just super reflective. I want everybody to be able to, I want everybody's selfies ruined by how okay. much of the refraction okay. is in this so, place. The rest of you have gotten tickets to come in and see Knox doing her thing. And, uh, well, let's Mike, see. Mike, Mike, did Knox give a ticket at the door for Serial Killer? Did she leave the ticket at the door? Or am I paying with all the other riffraff? The I would riff assume raff, that you're rolling up with me. I assume are all rolling up. Oh. Well, no, you're already there because they had to ask you about setup. But tickets are on you. You say who you want to have get tickets. Oh no, my my people, my people roll in with me. Okay. I want, want all. I with. want everybody jealous of everybody I'm with. Just okay. This is the crew. This is the crew okay. you want to be a part of. Okay, I'm in so the band. You're in the band. You are the band. It does not happen without you. Okay, so I assume that if Knox is walking in, on her arm will be Serial, most likely, or at least trying to be on her arm. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how well he does. Let's see how well he does. Does he have to roll? Does he have to roll for that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the lady's choice. I, I think you should make him roll for that. Okay, roll for that. <laughs> Mike, okay. what am I rolling and give me the number? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to call this, because essentially you're trying to talk her into like being nice with you and so forth. So we're going to look at this as persuasion. And uh, We're still a very will they or won't they at this moment. Yeah, I know. So he's got a what are you talking about? You know you're in love with him. I want to know if anyone out there in the audience is shipping these two, because I want to see the fanfic. All right? <laughs> fanfic, come on. It's a D10, right? Yeah, you roll a D10. And well, uh, you roll your, OK, you roll your, uh, in this case, I'm going to have you roll your charisma, or equivalent okay. of that, which is uh, cool. I'm super cool. OK, and you should have a persuasion in there, too, under that. So I have persuasion is a uh, is a ten total. Ooh, total ten. Roll one d ten and tell me what you get. All right, where's my where's my um where's my oh there, where's my eight? Oh, I got okay. All right, fifteen. Matt, I can't take you anywhere. I swear to God. But anyway, fifteen. He's not embarrassing you. At least he's not wearing the clown suit this time. All right. I sort of right. think of your I think of your dates as kind of like what the dates must have been like in Jurassic World with, when Chris Pratt is talking to you know Bryce Dallas Howard and they're saying who shows up wearing shorts it was the tropics so yeah you're an odd couple yes, it's exactly like that I suggest to the entire guy I, I suggest to everyone that we get uh, ear pieces so that we can be in communication and I want to pretend like I'm security. So I'll be pushing people back to make her a little more flossy. Do, do you uh, like this? Are you good with this, Knox? I'm very good with this. And I'll, okay. and I'll say to Serial, thank you for making some sort of an effort tonight. Yeah. I want you thank you for wearing pants. I will thank say, you for wearing also, pants. I'm so proud of you. I've never had anyone rise this high in, in the world. And I'm, I'm behind you 100% and I got your back. So if I can make you, and so I, I literally am like, everything I'm doing tonight is trying not to mess up, Mike. <laughs> okay. Hey, between, between you and me, and I'll just like lean in really close and be like, I'm just a dumb kid who got lucky. But then I'll like go back and be like, hi, yes, hi. thank you. And I'll like pose for pictures. <laughs> Cameras are doing pictures, you know, That's like side eyes are flashing. <laughs> okay, you walk into the room and because you've already made your preferences generally known, the room starts swirling as all the hollow walls come up. And the world room begins to swirl with candles first and candles are in the walls. Some of them are coming up and circling around the floor, reflecting to the ceiling. And as you watch the candles get brighter and brighter until you're standing in a flare of thousands and thousands of blinding candle flames circling you from every wall, the ceiling, the floor. This is amazing. And you hear an announcer say, Ladies and gentlemen of the Paradox Club, put your hands together for Knox. Oh, yeah. 
and people start applauding because, well, they know a bit about you. you uh, you've done some pretty cool things. You're beginning to get a name. You're not dead yet, so you do not have a drink named after you, which is probably <laughs> good. And, uh, yeah, I was really amused the idea of a Johnny Silverhand. I actually made one last night. It's really tough oh. to get the right beer. Okay, so they, they're they plotting. Uh, you notice also that the floors are mimetic. They will shift and things move. So as you go through and you're looking for like a place to sit, sections of the floor rise up. You can sort of see basic hydraulics, you know, so that you'll have a cube of a table and then another part of a cube and the table is now sort of organized like a chessboard partially with seats between it. So people can sit down and see each other. It's all a very flexible arrangement. And looking it over, who's our tech in the crew again? Yeah, okay, we have cereal. I'm the I'm, but I'm not, when you say tech. I seem to remember uh, Too Tall and Isolate has some background in this. I do have some tech. That is great. Yeah. Okay. I do not as much. Okay. I've got a six in tech. Okay, Isol uh, Too Tall, make a shot at it. Nine plus six, 14. 14, not bad. Okay, so here's the deal. You look this over and you realize that to do that requires either a really sophisticated AI system or somebody sitting behind the scenes who's watching everyone move through the room and adjusting the environment around them. And you also remember way in the back, you saw something, you know, short video or something that at one point the government was trying to design a simulator room that they could send combat troops in that was going to do that so they could run around shoot at things and so forth like that in other words a prototype for what in star trek they would call the holodeck this reminds you of that article um paladin you saw that program the military did a long time ago. It didn't work really well. So the technology hasn't been moving forward very much, but you know that it doesn't have military applications right now. And they pretty much like said, yeah, like the rubber inflatable escape aircraft, we're going to pass on this. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> no problem. So, Knox, you stride in. <coughs> they have a table right at ringside. You see the um, the floor um, going to a stage. Stair steps come up. But at first, there's an opening act. And uh, <coughs> the, the guy who comes on, um, he's primarily a visual singer. So what he's got going is things as he sings that materialize using holographic effects around him. <clears throat> so he thinks anger and sings of darkness. You'll start seeing thunderclouds just out of nowhere swirling around him, lightning. And he's basically singing a lot of just sort of sad and down love songs, kind of in the you left me behind and I kind of hate your guts. Um, Not or, the vibe I was going for tonight, but right. But he's the warm up act, and uh, you know, it's you kind of feel like, yeah, it's like uh, a Taylor Swift concert, but without the fun. Mm. Yeah, let mm. me tell you about my last breakup. Oh, ow, yeah, no, okay. So, after a while, you know, he does his set, you know, it's like it was tragedy, <laughs> goes black. He steps out. The swirl is now still moving around. And and now, Knox! So, Knox, stand up there and tell me what you do. Tell me about your gig. Tell me about your style, your flair. Just Why do, do people it. come to see you? I was hoping we'd be able to get you to sing, but... 
Oh, I do hear I do hear noise in the background, so you have an audience. There is an audience. Uh, I was not prepared for any singing, so I don't know what's going to happen right now. But uh, knock, knock, I knock. will <laughs> stand up on the table, and there's a giant gla- uh, bottle of champagne that was already prepared on the table. And I'll take that and I'll smash it against the wall. Okay. For when it breaks. <clears throat> All right. You've launched the ship. And now what? Just like wait for the applause, toss it. Okay. And then head towards the you stage. You knock some little old lady down. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, thank you, Doc. What's, What's she doing in a club? All right. <laughs> kidding? You, you respect your elders, young lady, or I'll come kick your ass. I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> I'm just surprised she's in the club right now. All right. You, okay. Okay. You cannot uh, keep little old ladies away from a club in a place where there's gambling. Trust me. You know, I respect that. I respect that. Uh, yeah. I will make my way towards the stage with fanfare, but like... It's, try stealth like stealthfully like my earpiece i'll just say to the crew like do you notice anything unusual do we notice anything unusual mike yes you're Uh, incredibly uh, beautiful tonight go get him you You got the stocks not really Uh, you have a really mixed crowd uh, refresh our memories for those of us who have been following your your illustrious career through episodes one through three Tell us a bit about your music. What do you sing, Knox? Um, she does kind of like a pop avant-garde uh, tech kind of uh, pick. Pick if someone um, close, maybe that might work. Are you somewhere between the Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga, or I'm further out in like a, I'm more of like if Lady Gaga was actually an alien. But like okay. really like techno music and it's okay, so it's that. electronic. I, I probably would listen yeah. to you. Okay. So you're going to basically have a lot more electronic effects, and you're gonna have basically a fairly sophisticated crowd. That's what's running with with uh, what's called techno shock right mm. now. I like full fanfare. Right. So the techno shock uh, crew, uh, you're gonna be getting pretty upscale corpse you're going to be getting um a y- somewhat younger crowd that's interested and wants to be seen as you know, the hip crowd um the little old lady stands out to you but if you stopped and did some library research you'd find that she was once a pop singer too a while back and she wants what the new kids are doing she might even be an agent now you've heard rumors oh so you may not have wanted to hit her with the champagne bottle um, I want to talk to her later. Right. Okay. Hang on a second. Let's get this back where I want it. All right. So the rest of the crowd is, like I said, a mix. Uh, most of it is fairly well healed. Paradox is expensive. You know, uh, four stars on the little, you know, five star meter. So it's not super exclusive. Um, who wants to do it? deeper search of the room scanning for anything that stands out oh boy yeah okay so perception check it awareness rather awareness rules awareness or perception awareness i don't have awareness i have Wait perception. awareness sorry perception remember i'm bouncing between three different systems right now okay so you have aware <laughs> you have perception that is a 27, Mike. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to chime in? Yeah, uh, not as good for me, but that's a 14. Okay. You, you see the average crowd. You, Paladin, notice there's one guy. He's sort of in a, not a corner, but in a place where he can command a view of the room. You figure if, you know, you were setting up a club, this would be, the important person's spot he's you figure mid 30s um for you know dressed very very subdued but high fashion corp that just reeks money he's ridiculously good looking in a way that isn't visibly Good looking, if you know what I mean. That like sort of George Clooney like Matthew good looking. Lillard. Yes, like it Matthew lo- Lillard. Matt, 
Matt, you, you stand out. People look at you and go, yeah, he's ridiculous. Wait a minute, good looking. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, me. but this is more... But this is more that um, I, I would say um, more on that Henry Cavill kind of level where, you know, you don't go, oh, my God, but you go, yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Knox is going, are you kidding, Henry Cavill? I don't know whether she's laughing at the idea or not, but, you know, we do a lot of Witcher stuff over here for obvious reasons. So um, he stands out mainly because of person like that usually has about half a dozen bodyguards around him and you pal oh. having done bodyguard go hmm and you start looking for his backup you don't see uh -huh. any as far as you can tell and he's okay. um he doesn't fit you know he doesn't stand out in terms of anything he's doing he stands out in terms of that he just looks even higher class clientele than an already pretty higher class club that's what you got. I point him out. I point him out to the rest of the crew. Hey. Okay. What do you guys do with it? Uh, keep an eye on him. Okay. So, Knox, you get up, you start doing your set. And unfortunately, I can't have you actually sing on stage. But. Actually, we did have at one point when I was in New Caledonia, somebody who actually did sing the entire thing while somebody else actually played music on their phone. I was amazed. Uh, next but time we're, we're prepping that, we're doing it. I did there's not no better you. time than the present, Nora. Uh, we can, uh, there, there are I better can times. make that happen. Uh, there, got, are, there are better times. I've it's got called the, the internet future. at my fingertips. If it's you need a karaoke future. track, I've mm, got... Fix no. up. I, it's called the future when we're prepared for it. <laughs> I'm 100% uh, prepared for a duet right now. Whatever we <laughs> islands in the islands in the stream. You oh, can't Lord. sing "Endless Love in the Dark." Endless, yes. <laughs> Endless love. Oh wait a minute! Remember, kids, it's got to be PG. <laughs> it's all good. So no Barry White. <laughs> like if you can do if you could do techno islands in the stream, I'm there. <laughs> That's we got to do that. Okay, Jason, start looking on the internet. We're going to do a playlist. What's that Bonnie Next Tyler? Game. What's that oh, Bonnie I need Tyler a hero? song? I need it. Oh, God. I no, the it. other that, one. I need a hero? Uh, I don't you know. Davis Eyes? No, that's, that's, <laughs> no. that's, okay. that's Kim Carnes. We will be right. yes. We'll be ready for this. We're do we're doing this live next time. Love I is promise. a love is a battlefield. Love is a battlefield. Love is a battlefield. We cannot go any further until she sings. I have to stop. Oh. Jason's Mike, busy typing furiously. And Mike, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Roll I, I over promise. To the bar. I promise you next time. I promise you singing next time. Come on, just one line of "We are young." We are. Young. <laughs> oh, the rest of the no. All right. He just yeah. blew out the speakers. I probably okay. did. I'm sorry. I sing very loud. That yes. is amazing. Warned yes. my housemates. My cat's probably freaking out right now. Yes, my dog just ran inside and said, who did you kill? <laughs> okay, so while we're doing that, we'll assume that you're, you're singing Loves the Battlefield in the audience. Yes, so we're doing the cover. Imagine sing along in your head. I know that at least a dozen of you have already run over to the internet or on YouTube looking this up right now. So while she's playing, um, you notice you know, some people are starting to get up they're, you know, clapping, they're getting into it and a whole bit like that. The club is coming alive. Um, as the club comes alive, you also notice uh, a slight commotion at the back of the club. And uh, you see four or people, um, two men, two women, also expensively dressed. Um, they are trying to come into the club and uh they're not wearing no sorry <laughs> i'm in the wrong time zone uh they do not have a reservations or b table space for them right now so they're asking them to wait and one of the men is looking fairly aggro about it he's kind of leaning over the the poor person who's dealing with the mater d tasks who's scanning their 
tablet to see if there's any place they can put these people. And they want a really nice place. And he brushes past the Mater D, and his date takes his arm and they sweep in in the middle of all this loud, happy raucous going on from Knox's routine. And uh, you can see them scanning around the room like, all right, where do we go? And meanwhile, the other two people come in, but they're not as self-assured at this point. Mike, can I do a perception check to see if I recognize them? Uh, yeah, actually. Okay. Now, is it a local check or is it just a... This is local. The, these people are, appear to be in-towners. Okay, I have 15 on that. Okay. Uh, yes, actually. What you're looking at is a um, the guy who strode in is uh, actually a fairly high-level exec over at Militech. Uh, he's in marketing. And um, you don't have a name, but you've run across him mentioned in a couple databases you've hacked through. So you know he's kind of a... Yeah, we're PG-13. He's a not a nice guy. He's but pretty arrogant. Is he dangerous? Um, he thinks he is. Okay. And as you know, um, execs usually have teams that do things for them. I have a guy for that. And so he's probably got a pretty dangerous team. You're just not seeing it. He may not have right. brought them to this, this gig. Well, like we're, like we're Knox's team, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, he thinks he's, he walks in. Um, he starts to like wave at Knox, but his date kind of stink eyes him and he turns back and goes, it's okay. It's cool, baby. And they scan around. The Mater D has kind of pushed the two people who were following them back and is trying to catch up to this couple that you've just ID'd. They are walking and looking and people are dancing. You're kind of pushing them aside. That kind of really arrogant, entitled thing going on. I have more money than you can possibly imagine. You know, uh, if these guys, if people still talk through their teeth, he would be one of those people who talked through his teeth with a bad British accent sort of thing. In other mm -hmm. words, he's a real turkey. Um, I'm going to make my way towards the door. Okay. I'm going to accidentally smack my shoulder into the guy as I'm walking by. Which guy? Him? Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, this ought to be good. Um, you smack and, um, he turns his eyes are alight and he reaches as though he's getting something out of a breast pocket and his date says, no, 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 not here. I'm having such a lovely time. And he l puts whatever he was going to take out of the pocket back. And he looks at you in this, with this kind of. I'm going to remember you look. I look and back he... at him, give him a look, and do this, and keep on walking. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's not Australian, so he doesn't get that one. <laughs> but nice. Um, he does know that you flipped him off in one form or another. So, yeah, he's just remembering you. And you kind of figure he's probably actually got cyber eyes. He's probably clicked you. And he'll... He'll figure out where you are sooner or later. Did I feel anything as I smacked into him? Um, one of the arms, possibly the one that you smacked into, is probably cybered. But it's um, real skin covered, not really well done. Okay. And part of it is um, there's a tendency among the corporates these days, execs, do partially covered cyberware. So, you know, it's like my hand is a hand because I have to shake your hand, but the rest of my arm is metal. And if you don't look way the heck up my sleeve, you don't see the transition points. So that's a fashion right now among execs. 
and uh, his date says, oh, look over there. And you see them turn and start walking towards the guy who is sitting at the table, the ex really expensive guy. Connected. Those two are connected. They appear to be connected. Okay, so I'm going to start around. We know what Too Tall did. Uh, Nox, you are busy in the middle of your set. I am, but do I notice... You've got brilliant on. lights in your face and a pounding music behind you. Nah, not really. All right, I'm just doing my thing. Okay, you're doing your thing and doing it beautifully. Okay, uh, Cereal, yeah. what are you doing? I'm just starting around the table as I see it. Yeah, I attack. I don't attack. I don't attack. I don't attack. Um, listen, I do not attack in the middle of the crowded club when oh, no one's God, done anything no. yet. I would never do that. Beast would do that, and then I back him up. In this moment, as he waves to Knox, I think it's essential to um, insert myself in Knox's like area to like reassert myself as her primary interest and not the rich okay. guy. I have well, you know, I feel like I'm listening to Nature Channel here. <laughs> the serial killer. <laughs> We'll insert himself into oh, the... Oh, that, that's gross. I didn't mean it like that. Is this I mean, a lecking ground we're dealing with here? No, Are you going to, like, carry feathers and gross. dance around her? No, this is both males doing their mating dance. I just want to make sure... I've seen that in bars before, actually. I'm just saying that on this night, it is my... The only thing I'm concerned about is I don't want to screw up. This is a big night for me and for Knox to try to make an impression on her. And so what I want her to know is that I didn't, I didn't shoot the guy that waved at her. I'm doing exactly <laughs> what I'm supposed to do, which is to get her six, to make sure she's safe, and that if she needs anything, a glass of water, a glass of champagne, that I could steal off somebody else's table. Like, whatever. <laughs> okay. To steal for her. So Okay. I, I, I'm enjoying this. I would just like to say, by the way, Mr. Lillard, that yeah. my, my wife, upon watching you actually throw things up, during uh, the last game said, this man is a gift to GMs. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Occasionally you get somebody who's really like, you throw them in the rest of the party and the rest of the party goes, yeah, he's doing weird stuff. I guess we'll follow what he's doing. Yeah, so you're our official weird guy. I'm the weird guy, but my only weirdness tonight is to support Knox in this incredible night. That's my only mission. <laughs> okay, well, you're in there doing, the, doing your thing. Um, long, I'm gonna finish it. Yeah, you didn't have to. You didn't have to get involved with too tall banging past this guy, and they are now, like I said, walking towards the really nice table. Obviously, the the fine table, the executive table. Uh, let's see. So let's go take a look at uh, isolate. Oh, yeah. Um, did did you say? Yeah. Did you say he has a crew? With him? No, clearly he does not. He had he two not. other people. He had another couple that he came in with. Yeah. And um, they're being they're they're not as confident as he is. Obviously, he's thinking, "Yeah, Mister Bad," you know. Okay. Militech, we own this town. Right. I want to take a look around the room and see if there's any any of his people embedded. Like, if there's anyone watching, if he's got anybody else in the area. Um. You watching the situation you should make a check with a perception I'm sorry, yeah i should i will uh and what what attribute am i adding to that mike so it's perception uh, plus what hint, hint. Uh, for uh 14 okay you don't see anybody particularly it's a really loud noisy crazy club sure now you're solo right yeah Okay, so remember as a solo, you can take combat awareness and you can apply it to different things. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have your notes that I gave you the last time, but take yeah, a look yeah, yeah. and see where you might want to apply it. The whole trick on solos, for those of you in the audience, um, is that solos are tacticians more than they are just guys with guns. They yeah. know how to read a room. They know how to make choices. A solo could at least run a small army company if he had to okay okay so i'm gonna uh, mike i'm gonna go ahead and add two points to threat detection okay so i get so a plus that, two on awareness 
Okay, so we'll pick that up the next turn. Remember yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. And remind me when we come up to it again. Okay, then. So we've rolled around. It's isolate. Let's go talk to the paladin. Um, when the gentleman walked in from Miltech and Too Tall uh -huh. bumped him, did the high roller at the fine table, get? In, did he give any reaction or anything like that? Because I've been keeping my eye on that guy. Um. He had gotten up to applaud Knox at the end of that particular set. And so, but he's still standing at his table and he sees that momentarily. You are watching, so I'm going to give this to you. Um, he read it and obviously noticed it as a problem and then dismissed it in a sense of the way you would do it because you two are a solo. So yeah, this guy's got solo chops. He may look like okay. a corporate, but he's got solo chops. Okay. Okay. So it's got kind it. of that thing of like, you've got a gunslinger in the middle of a club somewhere and some punk comes in and is throwing his weight around. The gunslinger looks over and goes, do I have to shoot him? Nah, I'll shoot him later or whatever. He's not, and nobody else is really noticing this much. Because it is a loud club. There's a lot of people. There's blinding lights thanks to Knox's choice of thematics. And uh, let's move on to Lucky. Yeah, so I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll kind of make my way around the room a little bit so I can get a good angle on that table. But I, my, my, my goal is to talk to the bartender and the server who are working that table and give them fat tips and be like, what can you tell me about the people who are at that table? The people or the person? Uh, are we well, talking about the guy? Are we talking the expensive guy or the two people who are walking towards the table at this moment? Oh, yeah. If they haven't made it there yet, I just want to know about the guy who's sitting there. Oh. Uh, yes. Um, he is a regular, comes in about once a week, twice a week, and spends a big chunk of change, usually buying other people's uh, tabs. You know, do you have a name? What does he call himself? Uh, he says we've never gotten his name. Okay. Well, if you can get I his name. Somebody, I heard somebody call him once uh, Bruce. Now, if you can figure it out, I'll double that uh, I'll double that little tip I gave I'll you. I'll see what I can do. All right. And okay. I'll just sit back and kind of take an angle on things and try to observe what my party's doing and be ready to back him up. Okay. And we're on to Too Tall. Who just went smack into the guy i just kind of keep on walking get my back to the wall when i get across the room okay and uh oh. just look around to see if anything else is going on okay then so uh nox you are the lights are dimming down for your as you go into your second set and you notice this really good looking guy uh expensively dressed and he's looking at you. He doesn't like come on or, you know, like, hey, babe, or anything like that. He does but not recognize him. He is, no way. He is appreciative. And you can tell that just from his look. It's a slight smile. She's not paying any attention to him, not, Mike. Mike, uh, okay. Uh, Cereal, don't make me mute you. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Knox. I, I, <laughs> Knox. I appreciate. I so appreciate Cereal's jealousy. Yeah, I right do now. not. I do not know. By the way, what your personal tastes are. So, find the person that, if it is male, fake it. If it isn't, but find the person that fits that interest level to you, and that's where this person's broadcasting. Seeing as how in the city that we're in, we don't see very many. I would say we don't see very many like suits, people that stand out of that stature. Yeah. In many places. No. So he catches my eye, not for the reason that makes Cereal jealous, <laughs> but, but he catches my attention. And I'm just kind of keeping an eye on, I, I just, I'm trying to, I know that the lights are dimmed and it's hard for me to see, but I'm, as hard, like as much as I'm, you know, in my performance, I'm very much just trying to keep an eye on like where everybody else 
in okay. my crew is at in the crowd and i'm like if they're with eye movements like are they clocking this person okay uh okay as it turns out it's matt's turn so unmute matt on matt <laughs> i'm unmuted <laughs> i'm unmuted oh god do i, I, have, I almost feel do like i, I should... have any acid on me can i scar his face <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, I thought you meant the other kind. Uh, I just have to, Lisa? Thank you for clarifying you that this? because I, I was so going with okay. LSD. Yeah, I didn't second. know where you were going. Yeah, I was, I was uh, around oh. here. It's a decent club drug. Thank you. Oh, then I for sure. I, uh, I you have some acid, yes, her. but it's the wrong kind. You splash in his face, and 10 minutes later, he's like, look at the colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to take him out. Uh, I, I, Mike, I will go. See, can I look around and see if there's a dealer around? Oh, there's probably dealers all over the place. I'd like a few minutes to find out who is a dealer and who is I a user. I'll take that. I'll take. I'll take a ten on trying to find somebody to buy something. And I'm going to okay. look for a. And that is PG thirteen, so I'm going to be disrespectful. But I'm going to look for somebody that can provide some kind of. Um, like black so, lace or something like that. Something, yeah, something One of our made-up evil drugs that we have in the made-up evil game. Right. In the made-up evil game, I will find, see if I can, I'm going to pocket some of that. And okay, well, if I get a chance, I'm going to make my way with a little well, sleight of hand. I'm going to leave you, I'm going to leave you pocketing it right now because that's going to take some okay. time. Thank you. Okay, so you're you're busy trying to score someone's drugs. It's not that hard because people do have things out on the tables, you know. And sure. um, you guys may remember in '77 there are those inhaler type things, you know. So there okay. are options, and they're okay. out there usually. I just want to say though, in my quest to find something to ruin Those this guy's life, drugs. I am going to make sure that I am not leaving Knox. That her six is still going to be protected. I'll say to Beast, um, or I'll say to Paladin, and I'll say to Isolate. Uh, I'm I'm on a mission. Make sure nobody gets near Knox. Um, okay. That's a, that's a legit order from the serial killer. <laughs> okay. So while that is going on and serials <laughs> going on, we slide on over to Isolate, and then we'll go over to Too Tall. All right. Anything with that uh, awareness boost, Mike, for the room? Ah, as this is happening. Uh, the room is really loud and really rowdy. You pick up from that awareness that Cyril is up to something, mm. not really hiding it well. Right. You pick up that the guy at the, the guy at the table who was, had been standing up and was applauding Knox looks at her and then about that point you notice that his eyes snap over momentarily to the ruckus at the door and then even though he's not looking like he's paying attention he's kind of keeping an eye on it and you realize yeah this guy is obviously something like some kind of solo or something Okay. You know, he does. He deals with it in a way you've seen both Paladin and Isolate and uh, or sorry, Paladin and other solos deal with these sorts of things, which okay. is that same kind of awareness. Okay, so I'm going to keep an eye on him mm -hmm. very, very specifically, and I'm going to communicate that to Paladin. Okay. Uh oh, as it turns out, Paladin is next. Paladin, you've now been told by Serial, uh, who thinks he's your boss, to keep an eye on Knox, and um, you're getting worse from Isolate. Tell me what you're up to. I'm just kind of hanging out, watching the crowd, keeping an eye on the guy, the, the people in the you know, the highfalutin corner and uh, okay. just I'm making sure that everybody hopefully gets to go home with all their fingers and toes and no extra holes. <laughs> okay. Alright, then so lucky. Lucky, you're unmuted. You're muted. You're Sorry, muted. I had, yeah, I had to. I had to unmute myself. Took me a second there. I apologize. Uh, like I said, I think I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm gonna be observing. Did this couple make it to the table? Yes. As a matter of fact, there's a conversation going on, and you are close enough to actually hear it. You know, 
Too Tall kind of walked through and out the other side. <clears throat> Paladin is up near the stage, keeping an eye on Nox. Isolate is keeping an eye on Nox. And that means that you are the only person free, and you're kind of close enough to see that. And um, you basically hear, I think you're in my seat. You know, I think you're at our table. And the man who stood up expensively dressed says, I'm sorry, but I don't think so. And he says, no, I'm sure of it. Absolutely. And the, the other gentleman stands up and says, no, really. Let's not cause a scene. I'll cause a scene if I... And without missing a beat, the guy in the really nice suit, you know, who was at the table originally, basically slams two fingers into the guy's solar plexus. And the guy kind of arches for a moment you can see it, lucky because you're looking for it. And uh, he staggers, his eyes cross, and if I remember right, Isolate's watching him, right? Okay, Isolate, you notice that the reaction, because you, you've, you're picking up your total solo, the reaction is more like, more than just you got took one in the solar plexus. You think he tasered it. <laughs> okay. And the the guy, the, the man in the suit, um, who you know as, as, let's see, I think Lucky was the one who asked the bartender. Yeah. You know as Bruce. Yeah. Takes the guy's arm and holds him up for a minute and says, are you feeling all right? I'm sorry. And he says to one of the waiters, would you mind finding them a seat? They, uh, he, I think he's taken taken ill, and um, they basically uh, he excuses himself to the woman who is with the man who just taken one in the chest, and uh, basically says, "If you wish, here, you're not looking well." Why don't you take my seat? And he gets up and moves away. And the guy who was trying to get that table almost falls into the table. He really was hurt by whatever this guy did to him. And the Bruce walks around and says to the waiter kind of quietly, the other two. Let them come as well and uh, give them whatever they want. Put it on my tab. And he walks out. Okay. Top of the hill. Daily City. On to the third set. Um, and we'll take it from the top with the center of all the action. Miss Knox, are you? Knox, third set. All right, I'm going to, my lyrics kind of shift and okay. I'm going to sing out, are we going to be okay? As okay. like a nudge, nudge to my group for, cause I could listen. I can't say anything, but I'm going to listen. So I'm going to be kind of changing my lyrics around. Okay. You kind of send messages out. Okay. So you're sending messages and uh, you notice that the tall, good-looking guy, there was some kind of kerfluffle at his table. And then he helped this other guy and his girlfriend sit down at the table, and he left after saying something to the waitron. So that's what you can see from the blinding lights of the stage. Right. But I do send that, like, I do sing that out in hopes right. that my group will relay okay. some sort of message back as to what's happening. Okay, so that's you, Knox. Let's go back to your erstwhile boyfriend who's now scored uh, at least a ton and a half dosages of synth crack or something. I what do you want? Are you looking for hallucinogens? Are you looking for hallucinogens or knock them on the floor or what? Uh, I undid my I undid my video. Are we all right? Are oh, you mean undid your video? Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah. 
accidentally oh, yeah. hit instead of me on a hit video. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, still good. So, yeah. Mike, I'm going to get as close as I can to this monster who's trying to hit on my girl. Which monster? The, the one who just is leaving? Most, I'm going to look at who has ever, whoever has the highest charisma. I'm getting close to him, with, and I'm going to palm this nasty street synth hallucinogen in my hand. Okay. Um, okay. What you notice is Bruce, as uh, Lucky has found out, is walking out. I love that name, Bruce. It's so nerdly. At any rate, you notice that he's walking out. He's had a conversation with the other jerk who just came in with his girlfriend, the Militech jerk. And the Militech jerk folded for some reason. And he helped him sit down in his booth and is leaving. So that's what you've got. He's walking towards the door and you intercept him. If he's on his way out the door, he's not of interest to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could still try to get him. Because, because as he reaches the door, he turns around and he looks at Knox directly. And he smiles. And it's definitely, it's not a flirtation. It's more like, it's a promise, baby. <laughs> Good. I think that's good. So as he's making that promise with his sultry, sexy eyes, I'm going to um, I'm going to try to. It's not really obvious, but you know you're on the liking ground right now. You're you're walking around going. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Yes, and I'm it's like two humpback <laughs> Knox. Do you feel like two humpback males are fighting over you here? <laughs> listen, the, the humpback it's not, male. It's not a fight if he doesn't know it's about to hit that bull. So okay. We're doing a. This is a Planet of Earth series now. We're doing this. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna. And that's what. Let, and that's life what the started. started on Animal Planet. Oh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that. Um, whatever that thing is, we'll call it the yeah. synth. I'm gonna take the synth. I'm gonna take a little water. I'm gonna pour it on my. I'm gonna pour it on my hand. All right. Uh -huh. And then I'm gonna fall into him and smash the thing onto like on the back of his neck so that it rolls down his back. So okay. he now has the synth with water on his skin on his back. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll have uh, trouble. I'm like, uh, before we do that, let's see something. Oh, frog. Okay. Uh, Matt. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Okay, Matt. Do you have dodge? Yes, you do. Yeah, of course I dodge. I'm lithe. I'm, okay. I'm very lithe. Dex I'm... and dodge together and a D10 roll. Okay. You Beat mean evasion? 30. Is that evasion? Yeah, evasion. Beat 30. Uh, oh, I got a... How is he getting a 30? I got a 20. Because he opened and tit on it. I don't know what that means, but okay. I got <laughs> you roll open and you take that and you roll another 10 to find out how big he went basically no oh. okay okay um you are saying excuse me what did you roll i got 20 i 20. rolled a, okay an eight on a d10 i rolled an eight that was nice yeah um, and it wasn't even close you open-ended you would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you Medi never mind I don't like <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, I just realized who I said that to. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. He snaps around bef as the cold water hits the back of his neck. He snaps around and grabs you by the throat. Okay. And he's holding you for a second, and you say, uh, sorry, I saw, and he says. No, that's oh. what I said. That's what I said. I didn't say sorry. I said, I'm about to throw up. I'm about to throw up. And he says, oh. Okay. You're getting ready, and he sets, he like lifts you out of his way, and you realize, like, this guy is strong. Can't okay. wait till the drugs hit him. And he kind of like puts you down away okay. from him. You're not throwing up yet because he's holding your windpipe shut. Okay. He's just Darth freaking Vadered you. Oh, so, but can, so I have a handful of, of synth and water. Do I hit yeah. him with that? I got him. You with did. That. You hit him all. It's all smeared across the back of his neck. That's why he attacked you. 
it appears and then instinctive. Also, okay, I got it now. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Have a fantastic night, bro. He says, I'm sure I will. <laughs> yeah, too. so am I, dummy. Okay, and he walks away. Pretty soon he'll be flying away. Thank you, that's been <laughs> my turn. Okay, and once again, Matt does sneaky. Okay, I love it. All right then, so Knox, you, you see Matt fall over to somebody, the, the guy that you were talking to. I'll let you figure out what you do in the next round, but right now it's rolled over to... Let's see. Isolate. Isolate. All so right. this um, guy, yeah. this guy you saw, he got up. He helped the other guy. Obviously, you think he stiffed armed him or something and dropped this guy. Because the guy's still in the in the booth. And he's kind of like slumped in the booth. And he's going. <gasps> and she's going. How you? And she's like fussing. And the other couple come up. They're being guided by the Waitron and uh, the Maitre d' Don. And they are all looking concerned as well. And he's like. That's. <sighs> He can't even get out curse words. And um, you see the other guy had gotten up, Bruce, and he walked out through the door. Uh, he turned and he smiled. And not in a real, like, hey, baby, come on, look, but kind of in an appreciative smile directly at Knox. So it's more eye contact than anything else. And then as he's turning... Serial staggers by and slaps him on the back of the neck with something that is bright blue. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I have a color so, dye. So, so, great. This, uh, just so I have it clear, Bruce is the one that was standing that I was watching? The yes. Solo? He's yes. a solo. Okay. Yes. And, um, when, and he's... When yeah, isolate, isolate, when he slaps him on the back of the neck, you yeah. see the guy turn faster than you've probably seen anyone but a, a trained solo and right. grab cereal by the throat i mean just like yeah <sighs> yeah does he currently still have him by the throat uh as you're watching uh he cereals like yeah, i guess and basically he sets cereal down about yeah. three feet away okay and, and you see it's like it's like a crane picks yeah. him up and puts him down and deposits him okay and deposits him Okay. Serial, by the way, you, you have bruises on your throat. Okay, can can I tell which direction Bruce is, is heading now? Once he's yeah, he placed him out down. Of the club. He goes out of the club. Okay. Um, and uh, it, you notice as he goes by, the Mater D smiles, and other people, yeah. you know, seem to know and nod him, nod to him. Okay. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross the floor. Okay. To cereal to make sure that cereal's okay. Cereal, uh, except for that, you, you've got your vengeance because he's going to have a fun night tonight. Um, but you have basically black and blue marks around your throat, and you feel like you were in a vice. I'll, I'll say, I'll say to us, uh, isolate. Um, that arm is not what it looks like. That around <laughs> Night City, that's not a. It's not a typical thing. It's not. It's not. It's not a normal arm. But then I'll. Um, but then I'll look back to Knox to make sure that she saw that he's gone. And then I'll get in the crowd and start dancing. You 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 look over. You see Knox, and she's got this wistful look on her face. No, I'm putting hey. words in Knox's mouth. I'm gonna head to yeah, the door, Mike, I, and and just no. I'm gonna head to the door and just look out the door and watch that Bruce is leaving or if he's like where he's kind of headed. He goes. He goes out. Um, yeah. Somebody summons a car for him. This is a pretty classy place. And he gets into essentially a really nice roadster. Um, hang on a second. Mm -hmm. I will give you the brand because it's always you fun. Can that in your Russian accent, please? Because I, I missed the Russian accent. Where is the Russian mm -hmm. accent? He gets into I haven't a talked yet. I haven't spoken yet. He I gets know. into a Benson Cascade, which, whoops. A Benson Cascade. Okay. Yeah, and essentially. You can narrate what you're doing. Narrate what okay, you're well, doing. Uh, I want to look at these uh, license plate, please. Yes, that's it, actually. Okay. 
Is there uh, a way City, to, uh... BTM 0001. BTM 0001. Modifier 001. Got it. Thank you. Cyberpunk thing. I mean, thank you. You're welcome. Da, uh, you are welcome. <laughs> this, da. Okay, so actually it is Nox's turn. All right. Just so here's what react. I'd like to do. And Just we'll be going over to Beast and then uh, I'm at the mercy of the DM here because in a in mercy. a higher end club like such as this where there's a lot of fanfare, uh -huh. I would be doing costume changes which would require me to go either backstage or through a trap door. You have, you have a backstage. This is a yeah, club. Yeah, so so this is the part of the song where like I would usually do a costume change and so I, I keep singing but I head back while my dancers come out and do their thing and it's okay. kind of like a so I I head back and take off my like I'm just in a black bodysuit but all the extra stuff is taken off I grab my stuff my tech hair kind of changes from a powder blue to a, a darker purple and I want to make my way back into the crowd to see like where if everything's okay are you done with your set no I'm still singing I'm doing this with this with the like I'm everything's fine everything's cool like everything's normal in my no set. no one's up there and you're singing I'm singing but don't I have usual it's the usual lights and fanfare but it, this is usually right now my people costume. are wondering whether you're do basically if you show up in that room mm -hmm. someone will recognize you no matter what you are doing because your face didn't change and you don't have holographic capability to do that hair color right, well, no. so I they're gonna think this. it's they're going to think it's going to be a costume change. Yeah. Um, hmm, how can I explain this? But I guess consequences... You ever, ever watch a movie called... Ever watch an anime called Macross Frontier? No. Go look up... <laughs> for ideas, go look up the character <laughs> Cheryl Gnome in there and see what you can do with costume changes. Okay, even if this fails miserably... Yes. This is my intention... And we're just going to go with it. Like, okay. how, how does this play out? I want to go and see how my, my, how everybody's Your doing. Your are. Okay. Yeah. I get uh, a bad they vibe. They think what's going to happen is you will not do this invisibly. Everyone, including whatever backup dancers, wherever you have, will think you're doing a costume change. And since you're not stopping singing, they're effectively going along with it. They're thinking, yeah, she's doing this. And so when you come out, your dancers will dance around you as okay. part of this okay except for okay. except for left hand shark he doesn't get it yeah left hand uh, shark will be doing his own thing it's fine we're doing okay. this i i tried it we're gonna go we're gonna okay. go with it and go uh you guys you have her dancing through um uh, are you like just in the middle of the floor are you doing a conga line I'm, with left hand uh, shark what are you doing Listen, I tried to sneak, but once I realized that, like, oh, people still recognize me, I'm going to still kind of yeah. do the choreography, but kind of towards Serial to be like, are you, okay. have you killed anybody? What's going on? Have What's the situation killed? here? Whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, you're dancing. In that case, I'm kind of having you conga landing around going places. Okay. And the sure, audience is doing. loving it. The audience, <laughs> they're thinking, wow, this, this is a rock girl who's got it going on. Okay. So. Uh, you get by Serial. I'll have you wave the Serial. We won't have him talk to you for a minute because it is actually Paladin's turn. How is uh, how Solar Plexus McGee doing in the corner? Uh, he's starting to get his color back. You as a solo realize, yeah, you can hit somebody with Solar Plexus and they'll be screwed up for a while, but this was something mm -hmm. more. Yeah. You know, okay. So okay. you're kind of going... Whoever this guy, basically your immediate assessment is this guy, you know, may look like a corporate, but he's got moves like he actually is not just a pro, but a very high level pro. Got it. And uh, real quick, Mike, are we still rich from yes. when we took that ship? So we have like, you know, we have more money than we know what to do with. Yes. I'm taking it away from you next game, but not this game. But not this game. I'm 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 incredibly wealthy. This game right now. I have more Ooh, money. This is cyberpunk. This is cyberpunk. Okay. You could be incredibly wealthy one week and the next be in a trash can. Come back. Okay. You know isolate. I mean? Isolate. You got my back. Of course. I'm gonna go pick a fight. 
Okay. So hey. you're headed out to go find Bruce and pick a fight? No, I'm going to the corner table with Solar Plexus McGee. Oh, okay. You're on the way to Solar Plexus McGee. I love this. He's not fighting you anytime soon. Okay. Meanwhile, while you're going to go pick a fight, you're moving your way through. She's conga lighting past you at this point. So, Knox, if there's anything you want to say to Paladin other than don't kill him, because that would be tacky and I'll lose my job. <laughs> nah. I know Paladin. what Paladin's about. Okay. I just kind of give him a nod. Okay. Well, Paladin, that's your bit. It's on to Lucky and then on to Too Tall. Lucky. Yeah, I'm think uh, if I see Paladin going that way, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna fall in kind of behind him, like into off two steps from him, and just kind of see what he's doing. Okay, so now there's a small phalanx of rather large, dangerous guys walking towards the table where the Militech guy is doubled over and huffing, and he's now starting to drink a glass of. Say how drunk he is. Or, you know, he's he's got, trying to get a, a a scotch down himself but he's kind of gagging a bit. And so there, that's what he's doing. The other people at the table, his, his girlfriend is hanging on him like, are you okay? Are you okay? The other people are just looking like, son of a gun. We thought, you know, we thought you knew people here. We thought this would be, they're obviously not quite at the same level. And they thought they're going to have a really fancy night out on the town. And obviously this guy was throwing his weight around to impress them. So, as you go by, Knox is just going to let you go through. Lucky, you walk by. Anything that you guys want to exchange? Uh, I'll just say, I got your six. Yeah, I'd like to just talk of opportunity. Okay, so we're on to Too Tall, who had walked out, thumped into the guy, and was now on the opposite wall, if I recall right. Yep. So, now that I see all this going on, and I am a gentleman... So I walk over, I reach down, I'm like, dance with me. I grab his girlfriend by the hand, I pull her back and spin her on the floor. Okay. Um, she is so shocked that she kind of gives a little, ah! and he starts to get up and then he realizes that his pathway is blocked by two large men who are just kind of blocking the path. And the guy, who, the other guy, who had come on this uh, double date, kind of shrinks back for a minute. Um, and then you see him, like, flash his eye for a moment. And you realize that some kind of targeting scope just went off. Meanwhile, the other girl, um, the other member of the four date, she shrinks back and opens up her purse looking for something i don't think it's a lipstick okay so top of the round daily city as i like to say um you now have the following bruce has walked out gotten in a really expensive uh car and driven away okay um the car is it'd be like buying oh a, a, a tesla roadster it's that expensive you know this guy's got money um the Militech guy, mid-range to high-end executive, is doubled over but recovering and sipping on a scotch that is not staying down too well. His girlfriend has just been grabbed by um, Too Tall, who is spinning her off into the distance and doing his best Fred Astaire. Sound scary? Okay, so once again, it comes back to Knox. Knox, what are you doing? Listen, if we're doing a conga line, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna grab cereal in my mm -hmm. conga line, and I'm gonna try to like grab whoever else. I know Too Tall's busy mm -hmm. being a Casanova, but if there's anybody else, just so I could we could all be together for when anything goes down, and I'm just gonna like in between things that I'm singing, just be like, what the hell's going on? I'm gonna say nothing. Nothing good is going on. Because nothing, because we are starting violence for no reason. I want you to know, we have zero motivation. I am going. Knox is Knox's turn. turn. I, I like. I no, like no, no, the, that was it. That was it. That was that I like was the idea to you one because day. I asked you what was going on. 
cereal, one day when they do catch you, they're going to, instead of just putting a remand chip in you, they're going to tattoo low impulse control across your head. Fair. And, and that's, it, it's a worthy assessment of who I am as a person. But in this moment, in this club, on Knox's big night, on Knox's big night, you're starting a fight with everyone. I'm going okay. like, to get, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, do the call. I'll, I'll, I'll roll Knox out so she can sing the second part of the song. I'm going to go over to Paladin. I'll say, Paladin, you're ruining everything. Too tall. Settle down. Everyone, stand down. This is Knox's night. Okay. So because it's so wonderfully Hollywood, you yell, this is Knox's night. And the entire club goes silent. Yes. And you stand there in the middle of it. And everybody, too tall like has got the date like swung out in a classic and it stops does the music okay stop? so she's like too tall yeah too tall was swinging this guy's date around doing some dancing so he's got her like yeah and stops for a moment and she looks they look other people look the bartender looks you know all the other people look and they all look at you cereal that's exactly and there's this the there's this mind. silence yeah that that's where i'm most comfortable <laughs> Okay, so Paladin. Yeah. Am I to the table? Yeah, you're you're at the table when all this is basically you have to turn because you're hearing yeah, This I'll is Knox's Paladin. night. Paladin, it's Knox's night. Don't kill anyone yet. 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 I just point I point at the two guys at the table. No, yeah. I look at Wheezy. Uh-huh. I say, check it out, Wheezy. You and George need to go. Uh the woman who is still there at the table, who hasn't been dancetroned out of the way, uh, she gets up and says, come on, let's go, Harold. And she's like pulling the other guy who, at that point you realize like as he gets up that one of his hands has shifted somewhat and you realize it's a cyber arm with a gun, but he doesn't do anything and she grabs the arm and him and they start tugging out and the wheezing guy gets up and he's still wheezing and says wait you and he's he starts to stagger out and um a mater d like waitron with a couple other waitrons circle him and say sir perhaps it's better if you do leave and too tall are you hanging on to his date because she's gonna run if she can absolutely hanging on <laughs> okay in that case a waitron will come to you and say please sir release the young lady i give her a kiss on the cheek and i let her go she Aww. yeah let's find out uh she is not impressed she's just terrified oh. so she uh, you're too tall so she takes off the four of them leave and uh, one of the people says, and you know, one the woman who you just kissed says, and we're never coming back here again. <sighs> Sigh. Okay, so like magic or bad film, all the action begins to happen again. Knox, your music suddenly swells back up again. <laughs> you know, your dancers who are all like frozen looking at you like, what the suddenly go right cue one two three four da, 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 and start singing cool if they're who is nearest to me that it's not from my part like i know i know cereals nearby who who else is close to me uh that at I that see? point the bartender would be there and one of the equivalent of the major d would be there the bartender because he's usually the one and you can tell from the cyber leg and a couple other things. He's, he's a bartender and he also does bouncing. They try to keep the bouncers looking kind of like the furniture out of the way because it's a classy place. All right, but like any of the people that were being really uh, sketch, are they nearby? Other people being sketch? Yeah, like the 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 big uh, G, the GQ guy who had his girl taken away 
by too tall. Like oh, they're, they've been run out of the club. They're out. They're out. Um, yeah, they were run out of the club. You know what? I'm just going to take this conga line right backstage so I could. It was just just me and my crew of who who else is around. Just okay, because, so you're going like, backstage this, with your crew. Yeah. Okay. Just because great. this songs ended or ending. Yeah. And, and like and what the hell is going on? People had a great time. They you had a little drama. You, you got to understand a gunfight in Night City or a potential bar fight. It doesn't it, at the level you guys had it. it didn't have a lot of guns, didn't have a lot of people dead. So for this kind of jaded, you know, upper class crowd, this is about as much bar fight they want to have. So they had a great time. So they're going to come back. They like you. You're really fun. And you get backstage with your choo-choo crew. And uh, there's a dozen roses on your dressing room table. I'm not going to smell them. <laughs> oh, what a world I've created. Not going to smell them. I'm going to check for a card cautiously. Here's a card. It says an excellent performance. And then under it says, it's called in, in immaculate handwriting, Bruce Maxis. Ugh. And it, like, yeah, <laughs> is cereal and my who's around me at this point? I, I'm assuming cereal is right next to you. I, I generally assume in this situation, cereal is glued to you. All right, All right. so cereal, who, who is this guy? You were out there. Do I recognize the name? Um, Bruce Maxis, the best you've got is. He appears to be a wealthy industrialist who is actually reclaiming some of the factories to the east of the city. Right. He's not in, but he's not anyone we've encountered tonight, right? No. Uh, no, 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 no. You encountered yeah. that was the guy at the bar. Oh, that was the guy. Oh, okay. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I cut off. I cut off cereal. Sorry, cereal. Sorry, Paladin. Go for it. What do you got? I got a 19 on local expert. Bruce Maxis, is that what you're looking for? Yeah. I don't know. Has Knox shown you the card? Is is Paladin around? You guys, you said well, you said the, yeah. you said the whole right, crew yeah. went with you into the dressing room. I was room. wanting to to rally up the crew, so like, okay. do you does anybody okay. know who this guy is? Hmm. Okay, Paladin, what'd you get? I got a 19 on a local 19. expert. Local expert. Very good. Okay. Yeah. You know what I've just told uh, Isolate and Lucky, which is that <laughs> Bruce Maxis is a little known or people don't know much about him. He came out of nowhere. He's an industrialist who's basically renovating and is operating some factories that are smelting ore factories, that sort of thing, uh, on the very eastern edge of night city going into nevada he is you know he came out of nowhere most people say from what they've heard that he is actually out of singapore which is still around by the way uh but others say that he came from what's being called the new united states it's being formed hey, hey mike he has uh, money uh, mike i just i just want to say i, I rolled my local knowledge as well yeah. and i got exploding dice twice so i got a 10 a 10 and a 7 for a total of 36 on this guy so i don't know if that makes a difference but i also uh, want to mention that that's 200 bucks for extra life that i'm going to donate yeah. okay well does every exploding die uh give donations to yes. extra life? yeah okay we had we had bruce do an exploding die earlier okay we'll do 300 for extra life then we're up okay. to 300 bills yeah, Luke, so, I had so an exploding in the end, earlier. In the, in the end, cereal, it was worth getting choked. <laughs> there you go. You raised 100 bucks for kids. Thank yeah. you. Story of my life. Yeah, <laughs> do it for the kids. Okay, so uh, you won't get anything more because there really isn't any more, Lucky. He's basically, okay. you know, the kind of a rich dude who showed up with money from outside and is in doing a lot of big ass investing. 
sorry, big investing. I keep forgetting. PG-13, you can say ass. I think we're okay. I know. I'm trying not to Deadpool this situation. <laughs> okay, so you have a card uh, from Bruce Maxis. You have uh, a dozen f roses. Do you want to smell them? Do you trust them? <laughs> Heck no, I'm not going to smell them. I don't trust shit. There's... <laughs> This is not <laughs> happening. Okay. Uh, I do you move the roses even? I will. You know, I don't. I don't touch them. I just I will. Her, I just okay. remove the card. <laughs> you you remove the card and you move the roses and you see a very small, elegant gold box. Don't you touch! Don't you dare! Stand back! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna dip this in hot water and boil it. I feel like Mike. I just want to do a concentration or a, a con check. I'm pretty sure that I'm starting to trip on the synth. Even you know, the one that you had in your hand that you didn't yeah, have. I, feel like I, didn't I do was it. waiting for that to come up. As a matter of fact, I feel like my mind starts to shift because the blue that. dragon. The blue dragon that's standing behind you says, you can't trust that box? We are not that far into the trip, Mike. Yeah, you are. Uh, this that... guy, this guy, I don't know what you did to, to poor Bruce, but whoever's in his car right now driving has got to be having a great time. Where would you like to go, sir? So I'm going to, um, I'll be like, just stand, just stand. Hey, man, just stand back. Let me make sure there's nothing wrong with it. And I'll, you're, um, you're I'll, maintaining. I will, and it's, I, Mike, the only thing that matters is that Knox has a great night. That's all that matters. Do I notice that he's uh, not himself? How can you tell? It's cereal. <laughs> well, so that's why I'm asking you a question. I'm not sure if that's just, just him or not. <laughs> But I do have a... Uh, uh, yeah, he seems calmer somehow. You think something's okay. happened. Okay. Because you can't remember, I'm the med tech, so I've got the pharmacology. Yeah. So I could perhaps you, you figure think, out something. You think by the fact that his pupils are so enormously dilated that he looks like a lemur? Yeah. He's on something. <laughs> his eyes are like... like I'm going to um, I'm gonna get my cyber skates. I'm going to pop them out. <laughs> Start skating around the dressing room. My rollerblades, and I'll oh, rollerblade no. over, and I'll um, dive on the gold box. As if okay, it's... there isn't a lot of room. You're going to be crashing into people. I'm basing this off of a club I've been in before, so yes, you do not have more than about eight feet on a side if you're lucky. I want you know, distance and and space time continuum are very <laughs> influential. Did you yeah. freaking watch fluid. it? You ran yeah. over my toes. Yeah. <laughs> cereal. Cereal. Yes. What's wrong, cereal? What are you on? Cereal, what's going on? Oh my god, you guys are <laughs> lucky. Oh, the chicken lucky. is coming in. Lucky, I think he needs a shot of adrenaline. Yes. Uh, adrenaline. Oh, okay. you mean a hyper version of him? That's even better. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll open the box. Make him okay. burn through the drugs even faster. Uh, you open a box. Yeah. It's it's full of neatly organized, about six, now eight pieces of perfect chocolate. I Which, since you probably have the munchies now, is great. Can I try to swat that out of his hand if he tries to eat it? It's poisonous. I'm trying to save your life. I'm not eating it. You're trying to eat it, though. But I'm trying to save your life. I can't ruin your night. I'm just, I swat the box away, and I'm, like, grabbing him by the shoulders. I'm like, <laughs> give me some eyes. Give me some eyes. And I'm, like, looking over at Lucky, like, please do something. Lucky, please do something. <laughs> And then right, you guys right. ask why I like running this game. Yeah. All right, I'll uh, I'll, I'll come up behind him and I'll jam him with the needle. And... Actually, right. you have you have a hypodermic uh, 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 with a Bones McCoy, basically. So you hit him with the air hypo. Psh. 
Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Are you trying to, like, knock him out? Stimulate him? Because stimulating him on this stuff isn't going to help. You know, let's, let's could, look up. If I, could, if I could tell what it was, I'll look to, to sedate him. Okay, now, yeah, if, I think if I, you want to sedate him. Uh, I, I'm not going to stop and take time now to look up cocaine and adrenaline, but, you know, I <laughs> oh, think probably it's bad. probably not a... You know, the people who are monitoring my calls will be surprised if I do that. You usually don't have adrenaline with your cocaine, Mike. I'll just be like, okay, so we'll try to calm him. Okay, so he's <laughs> calming. And uh, does anybody ex inspect the chocolates? No. Or the roses or anything? Yeah, I'll inspect the chocolate. <laughs> okay, it's chocolate. It's good it's chocolate. Good. Yeah. It comes from a really high, expensive place. Just remember, they're not like shops around here for the most part. Things are, are imported, or you have to have a fixer, or you have somebody get it for you. So this is reeking of money. I'm not impressed. Perfect. You're unconscious. <laughs> I'm just trying to... <laughs> I'm just trying to calm cereal down. Like, shh, shh it's okay. Go to sleep. Cereal. <laughs> and while, while cereal naps, maybe it's time for a break. Can we do a yes. break, Mike? Okay, I think a break <laughs> would be good. So I haven't even gotten started yet. I mean, you yeah, guys great. haven't begun to unravel this. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. We'll be right back. How long? A, how long a break? We're taking five or ten. Ten. Uh, let's say ten. All right, yeah. 10 minutes. Ten. We'll see you in 10. Okay. Seven, uh, ten. Time for me to take more Odansitron. Woo! Woo yep.
All right, welcome back. We are here for the Gary Khan Ethereal Part Four of Cyberpunk Red with Mike Pondsmith and Team Monster. Uh, going to ask John. He's got some awesome information regarding some of the minis and, and so on and what they have going on. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, John. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you throw up the uh, the box ringer real quick? Yeah. So just one. There it is. Know that Cyberpunk Combat Zone, which is a tabletop skirmish game, is going to be coming to Kickstarter probably about the third week of April. So mark your calendars. You can go to monsterfightclub.com and kind of sign up to see for news outlets and stuff. But there are going to be dozens of amazing figures, really cool terrain, um, and everything in here is compatible and playable along with the Cyberpunk RPG. So it's a great companion to go along with the other one and it's also a standalone game as well so you can do some really cool stuff with it i'm awesome. buying mine you should buy yours <laughs> <laughs> yep and so yes yeah, so right now we're showing off a couple of the uh, other models so models that are already out there have cards that are coming with them so everything that you've ever had in the past that we've done is going to be compatible with the game as well and then um i'd love to show a picture from um Antares miniatures um, these guys completely unsolicited did team monster, which is amazing. And when they called me up and said they wanted to do this, I'm like, this is amazing. And I also have this really cool miniature of Lisa Pondsmith that I'd love you to do because Mike hadn't seen a painted one yet. So there you go, Mike, there's a picture of Lisa next to you and your awesome dog. And, uh, all of these figures are going to be sent out to everybody. So you'll all get one when you get them. Take a picture of you and your figure, throw it up on Instagram, let people see it, and uh, let people know that there's some amazing people out there doing some great paint jobs for Cyberpunk. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, John. Over to you, Mike. Okay. Well, kids, we are kind of taking some time here. Um, basically, right now, we're trying to get Matt down from uh, being totally, totally, totally stoned. So we're going to uh, use a very good TV technique and do a montage. And the montage goes like this. For the next week, Knox, you do your shows. And each week, the uh, gentleman, Bruce, shows up in your shows. There's no more problems with the Militech guy for that week or anybody else offhand. Uh, and uh, all through that week, stuff starts showing up at your dressing room. I don't There's like a it. dozen roses. This montage is terrible a... because after day one, I get involved, Mike. You're really? day one. I, something lands at my door. I say to Paladin, Paladin, it's go time. Like, okay. It get to day two. It doesn't get to day two. I'll say to Knox, Knox, your engagement here is the only thing I care about. Are you, do you appreciate this turd burglar sending you things every week? Listen, he, I mean, you're gonna expect people to send you things, but to be honest, he's kind of creepy. I totally I don't like it. Knox, I feel you and I totally agree with you. I don't wanna support you. And I wanna, I hear what you're saying. I receive- And Lucky, guess what? But about the third day into the Knox's thing. Does it get to engagement. two? No, no, third day, because I doubt you're able to get there in time to do this. Uh, the bartender says, well, I can tell you a bit more about the guy. All right, I'll peel off some bills. Here you go, he says, or some credits. Nah. He folds the bills back in your hand. Then he thinks about it, peels a couple off. He says, looks around and says, yeah, he's our boss now. He bought the club. What? Okay, well, I'm going to share that. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, whole thing. Uh, I don't think you're going to like this cereal, but uh, I think uh, your girlfriend's new boyfriend is now <laughs> owns the club. Jeez, make my life <laughs> difficult. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lucky, when you say things like that to me, I go a little crazy. So when you say your girlfriend's boy, hey. I go a little crazy. So okay, on you. day two, hey. on day two, did you try to go to find where Bruce <clears throat> lived? 
Did you, did you fall, decide to follow so, yeah. talk with you action? Some so, Mike, on, yeah. Yeah. So, if I, if I, could I have taken the two days to track that license plate that I took when he left? I did, yes. I slayed. Do it in Russian. Do it in, do it in effing Russian. Could I have Don't. taken some time to uh, find out where he lives, maybe? Yes. <laughs> Go get the red shirt. You are uh, tracking it. You find that the license plate uh, basically goes to a motor pool owned by Maxis Industries. Uh, my pen okay. just disappeared. A motor home. He lives in a motor home. <laughs> so it's all smoke. It's a better motor yeah. home than you'll ever be able to expe- ever be able to have. So I there. see red. I see red flags here. Thank you, Knox. Thank you, Knox. Hey, okay. Don't we don't we have a guy on this team somewhere that can hack computers? That's me. I'm serial killer. <laughs> hack the planet. Yeah. Duh. Oh. Do that mojo. Do that voodoo that you do do so well. Looking for okay. my looking for my hack the planet beeper. Here somewhere, but I don't need it right now. You know why? Tom Smith, what are you rolling dice for? What are you doing? Well, you know. I know me I rolling know. dice? Yes. <laughs> I'll show you my hey. uh, In that case, um, you do not find, you you know basically um, that it belongs to a motor pool uh, for Maxis okay. Industries. Uh, if you want, you can go out to the factory, which is where it's registered to be. Um it is not unheard of that really wealthy people don't have their addresses available. Kidnapping, among other things. Uh, and you did get a little more data to find that, yeah, he flew over, or everybody said, from Singapore. Mm. Which right now is a major trade center, again. Okay, so that's what you've got. Day three, yes, you come in and you find he's bought the club. Okay, that's, that's so a problem. Sleazy. I say to Knox, I'll go to Knox or Lucky. Do you you tell me that Lucky, right? Yeah, yeah, I tell you. I, yes. Hey, uh, Sue, you're not gonna like this, man. Uh, I think that guy's moving in on your girl. You bought the club. <laughs> Lucky, every time you say it, I want to go crazy. Stop saying he's moving in on my girl. We bought the club. Maybe it was just an investment. You have no idea. It's anything to do. Hey, hey, okay, okay, all right. Oh, you're going to love day four. I don't even get to day four. I decide to take Knox. I'll say to Knox, Knox, I think it's time we bust out of here. We go someplace else. This place is a, it's real. I, yes, every single night there's, Hundreds and hundreds of people. Every single night, they're screaming your name. Yes, you're getting paid a lot of money. Yes, you're ascending in the charts. You're doing incredibly well, but we can do better. Let's go somewhere else. I will say, I will say, while, you know, it's normal for people to send, like, letters and little gifts and stuff like this, this just seems a little too much, a little too forward. It's making me uncomfortable. I don't like it. I, that's what I'm saying, and that's why we should leave this dump. Because yes, it's the best sound system in all. Not the- a dump, not a dump. No. Nope. But maybe we should head out of here. I don't know. I it's 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 a little too forward for me. I don't. It's I feel uncomfortable. Well, we and I'll g- gather the team. I'll say, team, it's time to meet. Yeah, okay. Is talk. this all happening day three? Day three. Yes, end of day three. Okay. Yeah. This, Knox is uncomfortable. We have to do one of two things. We either have to get together and buy the club ourselves. Okay. Get out of here. And I don't feel good about doing physical harm to this guy because he hasn't done anything really wrong yet. And I'm, I do have some moral code, but what are we going to do? Because we have to, we have to eradicate him from her life. Um, the Mater D has come up while you're having this discussion. And he says, if you don't mind, the, uh, the the owner would like to speak to you for a moment. Oh, that sounds good to me. Let's go, guys. I will come with um, you. You don't go. need to take your 
I believe the term is posse. Oh, does well, he just want to hey. talk to Serial? Hey, no, hey, what he you... wants to talk to Knox. Say, what did you just call me? You call me a posse? No. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, oh I, all right. My hearing sometimes the war. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to insist <laughs> that Serial comes with me as my security. Oh, okay. As funny uh, as that may I seem compared, either. as funny as that may seem compared to like the other beefy dudes around us in our team. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can get us out of there in a moment's notice. Help, okay. Help you go. Yeah. You help go me. back. You're... I'm gonna take out my earpiece and I'm gonna take out power. I'm gonna reach over into all their pockets. And I'm gonna pull out their earpiece and put them all in. All of their earpieces. I'm gonna put them all in. This this is your friend, guys. This is this is your partner in the team. You know, just and so you know that. Secretly, see to everybody else besides Serial, I'm gonna be like, guys, I took him because he's a loose cannon. I need you to really on the edge. On stand I mean I need you to be really on standby because I don't know what he's gonna do. Okay. He's a buck uh, thirty in rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's on acid and some other things. I don't know. <laughs> and he can hack the entire system in here. I don't know what he's going to do. Okay. Well, do you go to the office? Yes, I go to the office because I'm, I'm... Okay. The, the Mater D escorts you to the office and uh, you find um, it's a not a super somber, but kind of quite business efficient looking office. I'm going to the office. I'm all the way to the uh, office. And there's a couple of comfortable chairs there's around chairs, a, another chairs, table chairs. as well as a desk. And he walks forward and says, Miss Araya, I'm Bruce Maxis. Uh, I know it's been a short time, but I first wanted to say I really appreciate you and the uh, amazing performances you put on for and he looks kind of embarrassed. Well, my new club. Do you always send such extravagant gifts to your uh, performers? Only if they're performers I really, really want to encourage to stay at the club. You see, mm -hmm. we have, I, I've found in my investments in clubs I had in Singapore that getting a keynote singer was very important and in singapore i'm afraid i haven't been in the states very long or what's left of it but in singapore this would be a proper response to a singer that you wanted to engage i i do hope you didn't take this as a, a romantic interest it's purely business believe me i see well what is it that you are after since you have He'll, he chuckles and says you actually I'll, I'll be less humorous about it i'd like you to i'd like to engage you for the club for at least the next year we're gonna have to talk about salary we're gonna have to Mikey. talk about perks yeah. i'm kind of what you call an agent <laughs> he looks over and says you're Asian? I'm an, no, I'm agent. I'm an agent. I'm her agent. That's what uh, I said. I yeah. just kind of like look down defeatedly and like, yeah. <laughs> yep. How do you think she got to where she is? Yes. She has talent. a great deal yes. of talent. That's <laughs> why. Yes, she's an incredible performer. And she's going to go even further. And I want my club established to be a place where she plays. Fair enough. Let's talk about some ducats. I think it's safe to say, Mike, that uh, Paladin and I are right outside the door. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Leading. And, and and basically, at this point, the maitre d' comes by and says, I don't need you guys. You want me to get you gentlemen a drink? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, Unfazed, please. he goes and uh, goes and gets you guys drinks. And uh, meanwhile... Bruce looks over at you and says, so what do you think? And think the I'm vibe you get, oh. okay, right. the vibe you get is not like, hey, baby, it, but more kind of appreciative. 
he doesn't oversell it. He says, I want you in the club. All right. I think I'm going to need to see a contract. He says, I wasn't certain you'd be interested, but I'm glad you are. And he uh, reaches down, pushes an intercom and says, Stacy, can you bring in the prospective uh, engagement contract? And a few moments later, a I young see, woman that, comes wait, wait, in wait, with the contract. Before, before that, I'll reach over and hit the same button. Be like, Stacy, make sure it's the big time one, not the normal everyday run of the mill one. Thank you, Stacy. Bruce chuckles and says, we only have one kind of contract. Lawyers are expensive. Well, let me tell you right now, Bruce, what you're dealing with is the next great singer. So you're going to have to pay. And when I mean pay, I mean pay an exorbitant amount of money to keep her here. Exclusively? I mean, that's going to cost you. You understand that. Don't you? He's, he's looking at it. And you kind of get the feeling that he's listening to you, but he's not listening to you. And then Stacy brings in the contract. Stacy. And she sets it down, not in front of you, Serial, but in front of Knox. And, and just regrettably like, yep, he's my agent. And <laughs> you see on the contract on a yearly, uh, you figure it's like more money than you have seen before, ever. It's not good enough. And it's, it's not good. It's and like. It's, and it's not good enough. And it's not good enough. No. Okay. Can I speak with you for a moment, please? Excuse me, Bruce. We need to speak. He says, <laughs> and he, Bruce, for a moment there, he looks mildly, inch, you know, irritated. And he says, I'm talking to the lady. It's rude to interrupt, you know. I understand. That's true. He is my agent, though. Thank you. Know. I dragged that, that out case. and been a very annoying, like, influencer, like, uh. Uh, Sorry. And he says, he <laughs> says, as he turns the contract around to Serial, and he says, you may want to consider moving up. Moving up where, Bruce? He says, for example, that. And he turns to Serial, and for a moment, there's this utterly steely call, and he says, you may be an agent, but at this moment, I'm her employer, and I don't take kindly to being mocked. I'm not your employer. Uh, I'm not your employer. No, you are right now. I signed the contract. No, you are because you, you currently have a gig with this club through the week. So, uh, no. Okay. Well, let me backtrack a little here, Bruce. I don't like that. He I'm says... Sorry. You, you take over, because I'm obviously struggling. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You mean to tell me that... So my last performance, was was that under or not under your employment? Because I don't believe that you had she bought says, that establishment at the time of my last performance. He smiles this, true enough. And so this means let that me I'm not under it. your employment. He says, now. let me rephrase that then. But I didn't want to make it quite as personal. Mr. Killer. Yes, Bruce. I'm taking the time to show you respect. Thank you, Which Bruce. is something we do in Night City. the East. Yes but it also extends to Night City. I would take it kindly if you show the same respect. Bruce, I will show you respect. I apologize if I've made in a, a front of our relationship. I will let Knox do the rest of the speaking. She's obviously more than capable to deal with her own business, but I stand behind her as her agent. And I want you to know that everything I've said tonight is only out of respect for how much I respect her as an artist. How much I think she's incredible and she needs to be loved. 
Hey, I want you to know that in this club, she deserves the best. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Nox, what are you? I'm so sorry. I will say that I, uh, during this Nox, time, I'm so I, sorry. I had been texting the group just to be like, red alert, need assistance. And I'd sent that. And then as soon as that whole comes, I'm just like, shh. And then the door <laughs> slams open, a bunch of guys come in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's up to them. The text said, but, but I, I sent the text out being like, red alert, need assistance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The door uh, open. Yeah. I'm going to start. Sp I'm sure these guys are ahead of me, but I'll start running up. I just like knock on the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, while he's. Why you're crying, okay. And Bruce says, it's in my best interest to make sure she is well treated. You know, uh, and basically at that point, you knock on the door and he looks up and says, can it wait? We're busy. Private matter. I knock on the door again. Okay. Bruce says, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, he walks over to the door and opens the door and sees you there. And he Hi. says, Hi, can I help you? We're trying to get a business deal done. What's here. with the weeping angel? What's with the weeping angel? He <laughs> looks over and he says, he leans over kind of almost conspiratorially and says, she says that's her agent. I think it's her boyfriend, and I think he's having a nervous breakdown. Do you know him? Yeah. Can you help him? Sure. I'm kind of at a bit Isolate. of a loss here. Bobby, Isolate. I lost it. I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. Isolate. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. I know. I know. Isolate. I know. I know. Isolate. Do me a favor. Grab cereal. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got him. Okay. Mr. Bruce, I love your club, and we just really, really, really Well, good. I'm glad you'll be here again. <laughs> I just, I, I say, it's okay. It's okay. And I look over at, um, I look over at Paladin, and I, I like, look at him, like. Wait outside. outside. Okay. okay. And, and I just, you. I just apply, I apply gentle pressure. <laughs> to cereal so he goes to sleep. <laughs> to lullaby. Save me the rush. I'll wait outside with him. Wait outside with him. Uh, okay. Oh lord. As soon as as soon as cereal goes limp, I'm gonna carry I'm gonna drag him out the door. <laughs> and then I sit down at the table next You're to You're dating this guy? <laughs> uh, we it's need up to in talk. the air. Yeah. There's a lot of blurred lines. I'll say. Uh, okay, so we have right now Paladin in the room. Serial isolates taking cereal out. Lucky, are Dra you dragging? There? Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll check and make sure that the cereal's okay. And too tall, you're wisely staying out of this, I assume. I'm gonna walk in, but just stand by the door. Okay. Bruce stops and he looks at all of these people and he says. The last time I saw this many men concerned about a woman's safety, it was all of her brothers. Are they related to you? Concerned family. Uh, I do consider them my family. Hmm. I understand that. Are there any other family members I should meet besides your uh, brother, the one who was crying? He's a nice boy, but he seems to be stressing a lot on this well it all depends on how forward you're gonna be well i'll be very forward he leans over and he says if you look at this contract and you look it over and it's very clear um i'm not going to give you an exact number but it's a lot of money and you get a bonus at the end of it which is a really like you could buy a small yacht with it what's the catch he says there isn't a catch. You're the hottest thing right now in Night City. Anybody else out there will want you. 
I don't intend to let them have you headlining their shows. I'm trying to get a club off the ground, and I want the best, and I can afford that. Your talent is worth it. Maybe we do things differently in Night City, but in the East, honor, integrity are still valuable. I understand that you love her, but you have to let them go sometimes. If you love them, you give them space. Space, serial killer. You have to understand. I can't. I just love her so much. Hey, Mike. It's yes. okay. No, he's it's outside. Okay. He's outside. He's outside. Can yeah, I? Oh, that's right. Outside. Oh, that's right. Mike. Your yes. I order a vodka. Can I a roll, of, of Russian can vodka. Can I roll in, an... Can I make an education roll to read through the contract? Yeah. You don't even have to. It's okay, pretty, cool. as far as you could hear, Mike, if you were A, a lawyer, or B, Lisa, you would be able to get more out of this contract. But then I've often said my wife should I, be a lawyer. Yeah, but I could I could have an exploding diet and make money for children. Yes, well, give it a try. Let's, let's see. Explode, baby. Alas, I did not make money for children. Oh, I apologize. Oh, well, you know, forgive me. But I got a 16 for career. education. Okay, it basically, as far as you can tell, um, it is a pretty straightforward business contract. In fact, you're pretty sure that this contract is probably used all over, at least, you know, the all over Asia. It's been translated. Uh, there's nothing that says, like, you have to marry the owner or, you know, you're enslaved or anything like that. It's for one year. Uh, it's not... Um, exclusive performances but exclusive performances in club and it lists the venues so basically you come to his club right. if you want to go out and do concerts that's another story so this isn't a big trouble little china situation we got going on here what you have green eyes and he wants to marry you it's, i don't know oh, guys that is from the 90s y'all <laughs> Yes, and so are we, kids. <laughs> you see, Cyril, they say that women are from Venus and the men are from Pluto, and it just happens sometimes. You grow apart and they find other people, and you just have to let it go. Okay. She, he has lots of cars. All right, so, uh, Knox, this is a pretty straightforward contract. I I, I don't, the, I, I can't really, I don't read much subterfuge right. stuff in it. I mean, I trust you guys. If, if you and that is a shitload of money. It's a shitload it is, of money. It is a shitload of money. Like, there's are there are there breaks where we do like vacation time, guys? We can actually be on a yacht, like during you could buy vacation a yacht. time. You could buy a yacht. I'm on a boat. <laughs> All right, f it. Let's do this. Give me a pen. I'm signing this thing. <laughs> okay. He reaches down, opens the desk door, takes out a pen, a gold fountain pen. Hands it to you. I'm just signing. Okay. Signing a big, big, elaborate, lots of loops, lots of whatever. Okay. There's a heart over an eye, even there's no eye in my name, but I'm still doing <laughs> it. Making it up. Okay. <laughs> That's the right. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, he smiles broadly and says, excellent, excellent. And he shakes your hand firmly. He does not do a two-hand grasp. He does a manly grasp with you, shaking your hand, like a regular hand, business handshake. Uh, uh. And he says, believe me, I think you will enjoy it here. Together we can make this club stand out as a model for what really classy outfits can be. I have lots of classy outfits says he chuckles and he says by the time we're done you'll be able to afford a lot more classy outfits hey we're already a classy outfit team monster <laughs> okay see this see this suit you know how much this costs <laughs> lucky lucky is a man of 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 classy outfits of impeccable oh. grooming and taste yeah Good. yes okay of the paladin's so, majestic waterfall of a beard he he basically <laughs> um has his person, Stacy, come in, pick up the contract. Uh, both, 
he signs his sides of it vice versa so you're now secured stacy witnesses it she takes out a little actually she has a little notary stamp in her hand <laughs> stacy's my secretary <laughs> you should see what she does when people like bother her <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, you have a signed contract now for one year from this date, um, and like I said, your performances are exclusive club performances. Not you know, if you go out and you decide you're going to do uh, something that's non-club or engagement type performance, like if this was the cyberpunk the, our year version of Coachella, that's fine. Yeah, you could do Coachella. Okay. The way he looks at it, if you want to know more, is it simply expands the brand. All right. So this is like a Vegas residency type deal. Bingo. All right. Vegas. All right. All right. We got Vegas. it. We got it. I got this. Yeah. I got this. Okay. Donnie Silverhand's it. dead. It's got to be you. All right. Listen, those are big shoes to fill. Yeah, but, I'll say. Uh, you know, I hear he's not dead. <laughs> but I will sign that contract. Okay. So you sign the contract. Okay. And, um, as you're headed out the door with your it's entourage. the weirdest game of Cyberpunk <laughs> ever played. We literally have just brought no. in lawyers. We've killed zero people. You tried. You didn't that, do it. Anyone? We've not made any. It's like this the weirdest fantasy game I'm ever. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. But we possibly turns, have a yacht for the summer. Who knows? He turns as you're leaving and you guys are all shuffling out. He says... Oh, by the way, Miss Soraya, if it's not too presumptuous of me, perhaps maybe next week you might join me for dinner. No, bro, no. Am I? Do I hear that? Do I hear the S H I double hockey stick T? Yeah, you still have the earphone in, so I'm assuming you yeah. do. And he smiles, and says, "No, strictly business. I know you're engaged, as it were." Yeah engaged that's a bit much but uh if i if this is a business dinner then i of course then i know that you wouldn't be at all bothered by me having my agent with me at our business dinner as long as he promises not to cry i can't make that promise but yes that he will be there it might not be good for his own health I can't believe we're stigmatizing male crying in 2077. This is right? <laughs> no. I uh, think he's crying. specifying <laughs> that he might choke on his own tears. Uh, Says uh, it seems okay. to upset him a great deal. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I, I... Okay. So you guys leave. Yeah. yeah. Nora's going. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, you leave, you go back to your, your home. Uh, before, or we you guys... leave, before we leave, I punch too tall in the nuts just to make sure he's there. <laughs> 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 I'm like, where were you? I was crying, and I said, hey, took care of me, and you did nothing. <laughs> you me. Nothing. Okay. I rolled uh, in. Uh, every solo in the group make a perception roll. Yeah, to see who I punch next in the nuts. <laughs> Sorry, no, I won't. Oh. Hey, Luke. I love this little guy. Listen, I, I made an explosion. Brothers. You don't have to. Yeah. Well, 400 bucks. Okay, so. Uh, 1528. Uh, 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 uh. What? 15 for me. I got okay. 28, Mike. Oh, beautiful. I, I, I raise money for children. You, you did, and you see the black figure basically running along the edge of a rooftop uh, and leaping to another rooftop and then running down the side of the wall and vanishing as it does so. We're being followed. Yes. By... Something on those rooftops. Mm -hmm. Paparazzi. 
Got the scoop. <laughs> no, they'd yeah. be closer. Watch for the they, camera. If they were paparazzi, they'd be closer, right? No, it looks more like something very elusive, dangerous, jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Mike, is yeah. there anywhere I can hack in? Uh, no, not right where you are now. I am assuming you guys are walking back to your place, or did Lucky bring along the AV? Oh, I never go anywhere without the AV. Thank you, Lucky. We don't walk. Yes. Like, we are rich mofos. We don't walk. <laughs> With a van. <laughs> Full What's of our gear. <laughs> yeah, like the, well, it's also yes, the only thing I'm good at. That's sort of a band, you know? Bands have a band that's full it. of stuff. Should we Steam lock and load? Experience. Okay. We're in. We jump in. Okay, so... Okay. Uh, you basically head back to your home place? Uh, no. Where this guy now? went? Yeah, you we're guys tracking live. this guy. Okay, you're tracking this guy? Yeah, yeah, I think we need to find yeah. this guy. So I'm going to turn on like the thermals and see if I can see where this guy's at. You get no thermals. <laughs> Thank you, Lucky. Um, every so often you will spot him. Um, it's a man, powerfully built, uh, appears to be in a skin suit of black material. Uh, you think it might be uh, some type of armor because it reminds you of a, one of the uh, body weight suits a little bit. Um. He's wearing a helmet, you think, because you see just like one red cyber optic. And Let's take him on a wild goose chase. Well, he's not following you now. He's We're following him. Else. Yeah. We're following him. But... Okay, let's do it. Yeah, I thought you guys were following him, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But okay. we can give him a good scare. Okay. Um, he drops down in the middle of the street area. Uh, you're right on the edge of what's left of the of the old combat zone, and for those of you who have audio up, you hear screams, kind of, kind of the screams a woman would give if like she'd run out of screaming, and there were five boosters jumping her, and he drops down in the middle of it. All right, yeah, I'm gonna drop down too. That looks like a good good place to help out. Okay. Uh, are you going to land, or are we going to fast rope down? Uh, yeah, landing is going to be tough with the AV. Remember, the AV is like the size of a large, uh, a, a classic van, not a minivan, a van. You're right. Yeah, full size. Conversion Does anybody remember van. what a full van looks like these days? Yeah. Yeah. yeah usually, yes. Yeah. Like maybe with a cool mural painted on the side. That'd be. Yeah. 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 You know. A maybe a. A wizard, yeah. That's the way to unicorn. go, man. Unicorn, man. Or unicorn, yeah. yeah. Could be yeah. Uh, I'll drop the ramp in the back and say, out you go. Ah! Thud, thud, thud. Yeah, we can fast rope out. I'll fast rope out. I don't care. Okay, so you guys are dropping to the ground. Um, as you hit the alleyway at the far end, you see a woman who is clothes torn up, bloodied. Another woman who looks like she's been really really worked over uh more slashed up and you see this guy drops down has dropped in the middle and there's about eight booster types around him uh you think they're from metal storm and he is going through and rapidly dispatching them i yell <laughs> ah! crack neck ha ah! snap that sort of thing You guys jumping into the fight? There's still a few boosters left for you. Isolate. Yes. Did you stay? Did you stay on the on the uh, UAV and provide Overwatch, or did you come down to the? Yeah. Ground? No. No. I'll stay. I'll You're staying and doing over. high Overwatch. Too tall. Did yeah. you come to the ground? Yep, I came down. You okay. came down to the ground. What about you, Serial? I am uh, on Nox six. I want to make sure she is safe. Okay. I, safe? I mean, I need someone okay. to protect me, and that is Knox. Is Knox going okay. down? Who's driving this van? Um, Lucky. Lucky. Lucky's, Lucky's driving the this pilot. van. Yeah. So I would imagine that as we're dropping out, we're going to be like, yeah, I don't know back how much forth. I, yeah, because I, I don't know how much I could like tuck and roll out of this van. 
I'm sure we're going to be Well, no, you're going down on ropes. You're going down on ropes. Yeah, we're going down on ropes. Yeah, you on could ropes? never get this van. You couldn't get this van in the alley. Ropes, you say. Okay. Yeah. Basically, fine. <laughs> we'll do scene. this. I'll let me, down on let a rope. me give you the scene. Basically, you have a narrow alleyway, clashing trash cans, and occasional cat running around, that sort of thing. And at the back end of that black blank alleyway, a bunch of boosters are essentially assaulting a couple corporate ladies they caught and they've dragged over there. And this guy came down from the other side, down the roof, down the wall, dropped in among them, and is currently giving them what for? Yeah, screw it. I'm going down on a rope. Yeah. What do I roll? Yeah, are we oh. rolling athletics if we're going down on the road? <laughs> we're all rolling athletics. I was waiting for that. Okay. Hey, Mike, nobody, gonna... nobody screw up lower than a 12. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lucky, lucky, I got a 15. Okay. Huh? I got a 15. Okay, you're down the rope. Anybody 15. get lower 12 or lower? Lower than a 12. What are we, what are we athletics, rolling? Athletics and dexterity. Mike, I'm with Lucky. I stay with Lucky on his six. Nor is fine. Yeah, but I want to see whether you fall down the rope, knocking Nor to her death or not. No, I'm with Lucky. I'm going to stay in the in the in the vehicle. Okay, so Nora's going down. I thought you were doing her six. She's fine. Pallet is there. Isolates there. Too tall. They don't need me. I rolled a twelve. Okay. Uh, let's see. Order Paladin. Isolate. Too no, isolate stayed on the ramp to provide okay, overall. Paladin, rifle. Too tall. And then Nora. Okay. Say, Nora, you slide down. You can't quite keep your grip and you tumble on top of Too Tall. Too Tall. Make an attempt to catch Nora before she goes to the <laughs> ground over top of you. Break my fall. Dexterity Athletics. Yep. What'd you get? Dexterity. Huh? 28. 28. So you get an open end? Yep. All right. That's okay. $500 for the kids, guys. Okay. You catch her as she's about to hit the deck, and two of you are hanging there like something out of uh, a bad superhero movie or, you know, whatever, a mountain climbing movie. So you lower her with your massive strength back down to the ground. You guys hit the ground. Okay. Meanwhile, um, this guy has wasted about half of the boosters. And he hears you guys in the AV behind you, behind him. And he looks at you for a moment. You can see the glint of the red off the eyes. And then he reaches up, fires a grapple, and goes up into the air. You figure he's probably grappled or used a, a snare grapple in one of the areas of the buildings up there. Okay. Okay, so he's going up the grip line. Are you going to go deal with the rest of the boosters or there's four boosters left. He left you considerably for half of them. Well, that's nice of him. Well, you know, I mean, he shared. Are, are the boosters wanting to hang out after they just watched six of them get Ginsu'd? Um you're in the way of getting out of the alley because where do you drop down? Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're kind of in the way. So if they wanted to leave, let's find out how badly they want to leave. This ought to be interesting. Boosters, give me a number. Oh, these are stupid boosters. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay, so the boosters basically are still mad at him. They don't know whether you guys weren't related in some way or another. And what kind of convinces them to stick around is if they jump you three, they get an extra woman to harass. So it's kind of decided they're kind of rushing you now because they're thinking, wow, you know, we got three, four of us guys got creamed, five of us guys got creamed, and the other ones, hey, more for us. So you now have four boosters rushing towards you. How far away are they? Uh, they'll be on you in a round, so let's call it right now they're in medium range. Okay. Do we need to roll initiative? Mm, no. 
Uh, you guys can roll initiative within your group if you want. Okay. So 1d10, add that to your reflex. Uh, for those of you who are solos, next turn, if you decide to delegate points to it, you can do that. Thirteen. Okay. I got 22. Do we get another... Yes. Okay, we're doing great. Sorry, Luke. No, that's good, Luke. Sorry. <laughs> that is good. That's that what I meant. Good. That is good. <laughs> All right. So, ah, uh, where were we? Uh, da, 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 da. I, I Ooh, got so sidetracked, I can't remember what the heck we were rolling about. Your perception or just initiative? Oh, range <laughs> initiative. Yes. Initiative. Okay. So right now you're going first at the top of the round, and. Uh, Knox, did you roll as well? Because you're on the ground. I didn't. What do I roll for initiative? Uh, you're going to roll 1d10, and you're going right. to add your reflex. Or, yeah, reflex. Ah, reflex. Okay. Yeah. Uh, da -da. Where is that? I keep forgetting. That's not the... The top attributes. Yeah. It's not the top. Where is it? Uh, it's under I'm skills. Looking. Yeah. Second row. Well, it also should be... There it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for, I don't have a, oh wait, hold on, eight. Okay. Yep. Let's say total, total was eight. Yeah, total was eight. Okay. So yeah, you're going dead last. Okay. Dead last. Okay. There. So Paladin, uh, actually no. you are off the mark faster than they are. So you'll all go, uh, except Knox. It'll be. You isolate bad guys, Knox. Got it? Where's too tall? I'm number two. two. Oh, too tall is number yeah. two? Okay. Yeah, because isolate's up in the truck, right? Yeah, yeah. isolate's yeah. in the truck. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. Paladin, Isol too tall, and Knox. Too tall just got Knox falling over him, but he caught her anyway and looked really heroic. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I got a. Uh... I got a 19 to shoot the lead, uh, the shoot the lead booster. Uh huh. I'd like to shoot him okay. in the pelvis. What are you shooting? Assault rifle. Okay. Are you just doing single shot? I assume. No, I'm going to do a burst into his pelvis. Okay. Well, it's going to be running on auto fire, which the rules are a bit different than they used to be. That's okay. okay. I'm down. Okay. <laughs> All right, roll 15 or better. Uh, I did. I got a 19. Okay, bang. Okay, who's not a happy camper? I think he's even moved into critical injuries. We'll find out in a second. Okay. Da, 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 da. You know, one of these things I'm going to do, rearrange this, is where's my damage table? Oh, there it is. We moved it. Okay. 5d6. Yes, Throw 5d6. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Nineteen. That's gonna get through armor. Okay, so those poor well, poor suckers. I'm being nice to them. I should say those victims. Okay, good. So, booster one. 19. So, five. Okay. So, blam. You shoot one. And uh, since you're pulling off as a burst, that's what you did in that meter round. Okay. So, next. Me. So, quick scan. I look at them. Do I see anybody with firearms? Uh, they all have firearms. Uh, most of them, in fact, all of them are carrying some variant of a cheap Dai Lung. These are, you know, low-level guys. Does anybody look like they're at the ready to shoot, or are they all running and not shooting? Uh, they did not expect you to be basically armed with anything other than maybe, you know, clubs or something. 
This the guy they went up against who was beating their butts. He was doing it barehanded, as far as they could tell. Cool. So I see see the one that uh, Paladin hit. Mm -hmm. The guy next, whoever's the next closest, I'm okay. going to open up with my 44 Magnum. Okay. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> He's now closed it down. So uh, 15. All right. So handgun, heavy weapon. All right. 19. Okay. Throw 46. Let's see what you do. Fourteen. Okay. He staggers, spins, but you don't punch through the armor. So he is he is wearing <laughs> buttless chaps and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should have the traditional bad guy armor, you know, which is use sporting equipment. You ever wondered about that? Where do those guys in Mad Max find sporting equipment? You know. I guess there was like a big five nearby or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Bass you know, before we go, <laughs> before we go raiding, guys, we got to hit the big five. <laughs> I think big five went out of business in like '89. <laughs> yeah, well, it's that or we have to go hit dicks, and that sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Mike. Uh, hey, I, I didn't need... name the place. <laughs> I'm in the in, I'm in the van. Um, okay. Where do I fall into initiative if I want to take a shot from the van? Um, the van does not depress well into the alleyway. If if you're talking about leaning over and just shooting. Yeah, I'm okay. trying to get a shot from from a van. I was trying to get a vantage. That was the point. I don't think you're going to get one up there. really. Okay. Because um, okay, the way you're dealing with it now is you have two big doors and sliding like a helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're in a narrow alleyway, and you can't even get down the alleyway clearly, because if yeah. you did, the jet exhaust would roast everybody in the alley. Okay, so could I, can I get lucky to you drop, drop me off on the roof? Uh, you can do that. Uh, there's a lot of people. In yeah, you can land on like the roof. Thing. Yeah, if he, if if I could just jump out on the roof and then shoot over the roof at the alley. Yeah, that'll be next turn then. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so you're moving out. Hit the roof. Okay. Oh my God, it's 840 already. Goodness, goodness. Okay. We may have to continue some of this. I don't know. At any rate, you jump down and you're firing into that crowd. Okay. Uh, pick a third target or one of the ones they've hit. Knox. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. We're, we're how many you know, of them? Yeah, Whose turn right is it? now, you're taking two. We're going to them. Oh, it's them? Oh, oh, oh yeah, because okay. Knox is left. That's okay. what I thought, Too yeah. tall. Then I, I was going to have Isolate, but I'm going to have Isolate be getting to the roof, so he's not going right now. So it's their turn, then Knox's turn. So let's see. It's their turn. Well, the first guy who's got a problem is going to be looking at Paladin, because Paladin shot first. I just want to find out whether they all shoot at you or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they all shoot at you. Okay. Good luck, Paladin. You drew their fire. Can I dodge? Hmm? Yes, it, I'm assuming you dodge. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm kind of. That's going to give you uh, some pluses, but meanwhile. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Back to the ranch. They've closed enough, so they're now down to the base 15. Okay, so... Ooh. Hey, we have another, another open end. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Here, $700. Okay. 26. Wow. Okay. What do I roll to dodge, Mike? Okay. Uh, that is, we roll in this system against the range. Uh, if you dodge, you get to add other stuff to that okay okay so in this case uh you are able to add up to if you've done this um you're able to add e dodge equal to what you put in from your uh special ability okay 
Okay. So what, where are you right now, specialty wise? I haven't used any of them. No, but I mean, do you have, have you four. have a special ability of four? Okay, yeah. you can add four points in your dodge. I'll add those. Okay. So where does that put you? And then I I get to add I, I roll a ten and then yeah, I get to add 10. four. I get to add four yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rolled a nine. Okay. So that's a thirteen. Okay. So he did hit you. Oh yeah. Okay. So he's luckily he's got a wimpy die long. That's, that's good. So some so five points get through armor? Uh, no, I have light armor, jack body armor with an SP of 11. Okay, bam. No good. Second guy. <laughs> Not even close. Okay. And let's see. Is the third guy going to go for it or not? Yeah, he's going to go for it. Okay. Wow. These guys are... One did really great. The other guys suck. Twos, twos in a row. Okay, so the other two guys, it wangs off, <laughs> misses you. Okay, so it's now Nox's turn. So I'm just going to throw a grenade at them. <laughs> okay, remember you're in an alley. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Cause why not? Go big or go okay. home. Exactly. They're twelve meters away from you. <laughs> They're not that far. Ah, grenades I'll... only got a five meter kill radius. Uh, I'll take those chances okay. because if yellow. you fumble, if you fumble or do badly and miss, then I have to decide where you are in the grenade table. You go will. for it. Throw your grenade. You will. <laughs> I want to see this. Uh, okay, so what am I rolling to throw? Okay, athletics is what you throw with. <laughs> okay, here we go. Athletics and a D10? Uh-huh. Yep. Well, af yeah, athletics goes not with a D10. Athletics goes with a dexterity roll in this case because you're doing something oh. that involves body. So it'll be athletics is a skill. Okay, and, and dex then and D10. Dex Right, you got it. Fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Okay, you got within range. Okay, so you did not drop the grenade at your feet, unless you rolled a one. Let me know if you do sometime. Uh, nope. I dropped the grenade at my... I had somebody do that. That was bad. You know what was worse? They were carrying a bag of grenades. They blew oh. up everybody in the party. Oh, man. Yeah, that was, like, embarrassing. At a Gen Con. Okay, so you've just grenaded them. I need to go find out. That's actually going to spread because of the range, so they all are going to be taking damage. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm not at all impressed with your new boss, Noir. New boss? Yeah. Guy oh, just yeah, the new a guy. Multi trillion dollar contract, and there is no backup. He's kind of a dick. Just my, I'm just saying. You would think there'd be more security. <laughs> Protect the investment. Okay. Right? Uh, you've riddled these guys with all kinds of shrap. Uh, the one that you shot, uh, Paladin, he falls over, he's gone. The other two basically scream and run back down the other way away from you in the alley so they're now up against a wall okay oh good okay top of the round uh isolate you are now clear to shoot down from the roof all right now, okay you have basically two guys now no three guys up against the wall, basically. I next round they're going to try to use the women as hostages, and you guys are a little further up. I'm going to knock some, put you in the same row as um, Too Tall, with Paladin leading, and then are you on the right side of the alley or the left side? Uh, isolate. Uh, left side. Okay. 
left side of the alley shooting down. That's your field of fire. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use three points uh, of my combat awareness to add plus one to all attacks. Okay. Can I drop uh, a then, spotlight on these guys, by the way? Just like flip the vehicle around and, and like turn oh, on the high beam, call. so to speak, so I can yeah. spotlight them and blow yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You're doing that this turn. You're getting yourself turned around. Remember, it's you got to kind of go out a little bit and then spin it. But yeah, yeah. you can get there. Okay. Isolate. Take yeah. a shot. All right. Um, I can't find my skill. The skill I'm using for, for my shot is... Shoulder arms. What are you shooting? Shoulder arms? Yeah. Going bang? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be reflex. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You there? Yeah. Uh, that okay. is a 22. 22. Okay. Yeah. They're in range. They ain't going away. Okay. And your damage on that bad boy. Yeah. That'll be now, That was 5D6, assault rifle right? or was yeah. that assault? Assault, assault? assault rifle. Yeah. 5D6. 56? Yeah. Okay. What you got? 16? 16. 16. Okay. Da, 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 da. Just for the hell of it. Why don't you roll a D10, find out where you might have ended up randomly. Yeah. Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Interesting. Okay, so now that you shot the bad boy, you've done that. Your total was 16? Yeah. Okay, so let me just check one thing on the armor table. I want to make sure of it. Yeah, yeah three get through. Okay, so he takes three. I'm going to do him the guy furthest away from you because he'd be the best shot sure. for you to get. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, we're back at the top. They've gone Paladin. I think you're it. Are they still running away from us? No, they are trying to get back to the women and use them as hostages. So their backs are to us. Um, They've just gotten the women, so their backs are to you now. Awesome. Which okay. one looks the most uh, healthy? Mm, one, two, or three? Uh, I would say, let's see, going down to the top one, two. I'd say the one on the furthest, as you're facing, furthest left. I'm going to shoot him. Remember, if you mess up, you will hit a hostage. That's the okay. whole point. Yeah, whatever. They shouldn't have been there anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, well, either way, it's going to be a hostage situation. Yeah. I just kind of, whether you're going to shoot them or not, you know, what the heck. I mean. All right. Go for it. That is a 19. 19. Okay. Well, you definitely an assault rifle, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yep, you made that three and uh all right. You saw rifle crank out five D six for me here. Roll five D six. Twenty five. Ooh, that's gone through. Okay, that's bad. Okay. Let me check on the critical injuries table. Always good for a laugh. To the body. Wow. Okay. Left lung punctured. Yep. Well, in this case, uh, yes. Uh, actually, you've blown his hand off. It's critical injury to the body, and you just blew his hand off. So he drops the gun that he had and staggers back screaming. That'll work. It'll work. Okay. Uh, too tall. Um, shoot the next one over. Okay. So you're going for number two. 17. 17. Okay. 
Yeah, it's a big advantage. You guys are pretty close. Okay, you actually, you just made it. It's tougher to shoot that. Okay, fine. You hit him. Roll 5d10. Or, or 5d, sorry, 5d6. You can tell I'm getting tired. By the way, where is that I, I weird do. music coming from? That's Sirenscape. Nice. It's the official Cyberpunk stuff. I think I think it's so low that I can't really tell what's going on other than the. Okay, uh, I will. I will. Nineteen, Mike. I will give it more. Wow. Okay, hang on a second. Six. Okay. Uh, okay. Critical. Okay, remember they were turning with their back? Yeah, that's fun. Okay, you just opened up and shot the guy and hit him in the spine. So he is pretty messed up at this point. They don't have anybody who can do a treatment on him right now. So he basically, with a torn spine. Yeah, and he's just saved plus one. Okay. Ugly. So this guy, uh, number two, has fallen over screaming my back. Okay, he falls on top of one of the hostages, shielding her from any more attacks. And Nora, you want to throw some more grenades down? Well, no, not not with a hostage. Like, how far? If I was if I was to slash somebody with a monokatana, let's say, how far away are they from me? Uh, well, you're about. You're about 15 feet away from you now. You'd have to like basically take a few steps to close. So if I was going to you're, you're like close run range and like six feet, but if I was to run and like anime fly in the air and slice somebody with a monokatana, is it yeah. a roll for that? Yeah, yeah, that would be an attack. So it's a melee attack. So what you would yeah. do is you have monok or blades. You know, yeah, I got a monokatana. Okay. And do you have the skills to use it? I do. Okay. okay. So why don't you use that mono katana? Okay. So once again, this time I actually have an evasion capability. So that means he'll take his dex, which is really suck. And uh, evasion skill, which is also suck. Actually, his evasion is better than I thought. Okay. So I sent Wow, you might make it. Okay, nineteen to hit him. All right, what are I, what am I rolling? You're gonna take, and you're gonna roll your dexterity. Okay. Plus, if you have a blade skill, a specific skill for using that. Okay. Uh, like a melee. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. And then what you'll do is roll one d10 on top of that. All right. Uh, that is a 19. Okay, 19. Okay. And he was a 19, so no, you don't get through that turn. Okay, right. so you scrape right across him, but you don't quite get through to him. Okay. Okay. All right. So, next turn. Uh, let's see. Dun, dun, you've gone... Mike Pondsmith. Yes. I am not gone in 15 rounds. I'm going to jump out of the car. Yeah. Into the alley and okay. kill everyone because it's 9 o'clock and it's time to go. <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs> Athletics to see whether or not you don't totally break your legs in the process. Okay. You're jumping 35 <laughs> Mike, okay. I'm falling to the ground. I pop my rollerblades out of my motherfucking feet. Sorry. But that PG. Thirteen. I'm allowed one. Roller You're allowed one. Out of my god blessed feet, and I jumped out, bounced on the feet. I rolled a thirty-two. Uh, oh, you rolled a thirty-two. I go up the side yes. of the wall. Okay. Did you get an open end on that? And I grab my foot, I grab my, I grab my 
My, I think we got my, another uh, $50 or whatever. Gig, 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 gig. And, okay. Uh, no Gygax. In this moment of unbelievable heroic actions, <laughs> my family and I do donate five hundred dollars to nice. the hey. to yeah fund. Uh, we're playing tomorrow night. We are. We'll, we'll we'll donate tomorrow night as well. Okay. Awesome. That's um, fantastic. I think we have a wrap up now, don't we? It goes. You're awesome, line. Matt. Peace. I love you. Yeah, we got to wrap yeah. up. I love you too, Peace Matt. Matt. Matt, you crazy, man. You crazy. Hey, listen. All the bad guys are dead. The women that were sent in the alley, which, by the way, if that was Knox, she would have taken care of all those dudes. If uh, I rolled high enough, you know. I you tried. were close. One point. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Okay. So, uh, how late are we running this? I believe we're going till nine, aren't we? Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. we're past yeah. time now. Yeah, it's so we're gonna wrap. Um, I'm not gonna tell you where this all leads to. You guys spent a lot more time in a bar than I ever thought you'd spend. Well, but if we can get the team back to if we can get the team get the, if we can get the team back together, we can play part uh, episode four, part two. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh God, you guys have there's a rabbit hole, um, uh, so deep. But uh, you'll find out soon enough. And it's Let's got a it. really big chewy part for serial killer, which is why I'd have to wrap up now anyway. All right, all right. So yeah, serial killer is going to get to go up against a real serious threat. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll play next Saturday or the week after or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. I'm in. Yeah, sorry I'm in. we didn't move quite as fast. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is um, Luke seems to be the center point. So what I would suggest is uh, I'm going to propose a date for our next session with Luke, and he can try it with all of you guys and let me know whether you're in, and then I'll put the time aside the calendar. Yeah, it sounds it good, sounds guys. Good. Yeah, awesome. sounds good. You in there, Thanks cereal? everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it so hey, much uh, for running sorry, it for Sorry us I didn't again. get you much further. But, with our uh, madness, it's all good. It's all good. I I'm thought, sure everyone at home loved it. I, I expected, seriously, I was waiting for Matt to go ape and then, you know, like, start trying to kill no, I was trying to I was trying to play to the, the theme of the night, which is to, to make sure Knox is happy. That was it. Well, Knox is Great. happy. I am I am amused to find that Knox's taste in men are better than I thought. She did not go for the, he's good looking Hi. and rich. This Hurtful. is good. <laughs> Uh no, I I have I have that battle with my daughter occasionally. I don't care that he's good looking. You should stay away from him before your brother and I have to hurt him. I need substance and character and loyalty. Well, how much are you going to get from a guy who's just standing there looking at you in a club? Not much. That's, that's why true. that was awesome. Give, give that's why you should go out. That's why you should go out for dinner with him. Find out what oh, he really no. like. No. And Bad. I would like to point out Bad decisions. That that due to the generosity, due to uh, some great die rolling, we raised seven hundred dollars, and due to Matt Lillard's uh, uh, generosity, it, we bumped it up to twelve hundred for tonight. That's so that's not so bad. Wow, well. that's not Tragic. so bad. It's a pretty good day. So I have, to, I have to also talk to Calsorian's bookkeeper and ask her how much we can throw into, but we will be doing such. Awesome, thank, thank you. you so much, guys. Really, okay, that's great. great Any cause. last uh, words, Luke? Uh, hey, just tune in tomorrow. I'm gonna be uh, uh, I'm gonna be at it at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, doing the Gooey Cube great giveaway with uh, Elfinius Gooey. It'll be a good time. And then okay. tomorrow night at 6 p.m., we're doing uh, we're raising money again for for Extra Life with the uh, the big game High Plains Drifters. Where I'll be playing uh, Elf. Sounds good. Yep, it'll be a awesome. good time. Hey, Luke, can you real quick um, go over where people can make donations if they want if they haven't been able to tonight? Yeah, absolutely. It's extralife.org, O-R-G, and you can just uh, search for, they'll ask who you want to donate to. We have Team Gary Space Con uh, 13, and so it's just extralife.org. Uh, I believe we put it on a lot of our promo material, so if you look at our Instagram uh, or Facebook or Twitter, you'll you'll see the little Extra Life symbol, and it should talk about Extra Life Team Gary Con, um, and I'll post up some more. Right, and then can we go around the, the room real quick and talk about what everyone's got going on? Jason, can you talk about everything that's great at Realm Smith? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll end it off, but let's start with Nora because right. I know she's got some great stuff coming up. 
Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Hi. Uh, Black Dice Society is starting April 1st. It's the D newest uh, official D&D &D campaign set in the Domains of Dread, DM'd by B. Dave Walters. Follow me uh, at Neurological and the Things to get uh, updated on stuff. But yeah, April 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be right before Critical Role. I'm also doing them uh, Into the Mist on Realmsmith with uh, Jason. And uh, yeah, take it away. Somebody else. Matt. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Matthew Lillard. Uh, I am a professional actor. I'm now on a show called Good Girls on NBC. It's All right. It's one screen, uh, stream show right now. Are you kidding me? It's uh, awesome. I can't. I didn't know that. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it was on. Show. I'll just check it out now. Oh, it's really good. good it is. Well. It's been um, the the show's taken off recently, and it's been great for everyone. So we're excited to be back. Um, I am also one of the uh, founders and driving forces behind a company called Beetle and Grimms. We create high-end box editions of D&D releases and Pathfinder elements and all kinds of good stuff. We have very exciting announcements coming up, which we can't talk about here, but we're excited about that. And I'm always thrilled to spend time with the people on the stream. I, whether um, you have to hear me when I say this, but I do these things a lot. And I love playing with the people on the stream. So thank you for spending time with me. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. John, what do you got going on for Monster Fight Club? Yep. So um, I'm John Kovaleski. I make cool stuff over at Monster Fight Club. Yes, and uh, cool right now we are absolutely focused on Cyberpunk and the new Combat Zone uh, skirmish game that we're coming out with. We, um, got, we've got over 100 figures sculpted right now and so much more in the pipeline that's just going to keep coming down. And then the other thing that uh, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, I thought you guys were doing some stuff for The Witcher. There is some stuff for The Witcher coming. So we're going to have some really cool miniatures to talk about mm -hmm. right down the pipe. Right. Which uh, perfectly leads into me. I'm Mike Ponsmith. I run Artel Story in Games, where I'm the chief cook, bottle washer, and occasional designer. Um, we do Cyberpunk and Witcher, as well as other games. Right now, for Witcher, we have a couple really nice things coming up there's uh the, the tome of chaos which is right now going in in production uh we also have a wonderful book of tales called the book of tales which are fables and stories and things which occur within the witcher world it's a lot of really fun adventures but they're because witcher very very atmospheric as well and in addition, we're doing a bunch of cyberpunk stuff. In about two weeks, I think, from what I gather, we should be releasing a referee screen. Uh, we're currently banging out and getting the last steps done on a um, what we call the data pack, which is uh, useful things in terms of uh, character sheets, maps, um, encounter tables, how certain things work in terms of rule shifts, all of that in one easy to use package. And currently, the bane of my life is I'm working on both Chromebook 1 and Chromebook 2 for this series, uh, respectively called Chrome, Black Chrome, and then Rusted Chrome. One covers more urban, the other covers more nomads. And uh, also on that same list, we are working up a specialty nomad book and a specialty book on night markets. So we have a lot of things going on in cyberpunk land. And we hope you come and visit us. Awesome. Uh, Beast, any final words? Hey, I'm Beast. I do beastly things. And I always look forward to playing with Team Monster and anything else I can get involved with. It was, a, it was always a blast game with you guys. Mm, always Thanks, good. And I'm Jason from Realmsmith. Uh, we do live streams of uh, D&D's Curse of Strahd on Monday nights. Um, you can check out our Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash realmsmith. And actually, if you become a patron, you can join our Discord and you can actually role play um, and affect the narrative of our live streams and vice versa. It's really super cool and interactive and fun and something that isn't happening anywhere really right now. So it's, uh, it's great to be able to jump in and in, uh -huh. in a world that we can't always get around the table and play together. So um, it's an awesome community and check it out. And then, of course, Nora uh, plays with us on Monday nights. Matt plays with us on Monday nights from time to time. And right now we have Omega Jones playing with us. 
Um, and uh, he'll be on for a couple more. Uh, he's the critical bard. Uh, he'll be on for a couple more episodes. And of course, Luke has also played Morton Kanan on the stream yes. as well, that was awesome. um, which was awesome. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank uh, you. Stay tuned for the next hey. one. You guys have a great time and enjoy uh, Imperial Gearing Time. Yeah, before we cut, I, I just wanted to say that we did match in chat. We were up to seven hundred and seventy dollars uh, from Gary Khan and in the chat that is matched. And then uh, with uh, Matthew's uh, very generous donation, up to twelve hundred and seventy bucks. So absolutely wow. fantastic! Yeah, yeah. way okay. to go, guys! Super Pretty awesome. Good. That's awesome. way to end strong. All right, awesome. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. You have a Take good night. Care. Bye, guys. See you guys. Bye.